So we will start off where we left uh, before the interruption came in. So like I said, ABCDE assessment and management is beautiful because it gives us time to, and in that time we can save the patient, stabilize the patient and keep them alive just for about like a significant, like for the required amount of time before which we can clinch a diagnosis and be, be, before which we can have other people involved to save the patient and reach a diagnosis and to treat that diagnosis. But what took Shomar Juno the time to work on Shete Amake ABCD assessment and management there. On top of that, not only does it save and resuscitate and stabilize the patient, ABCDE assessment and management, if done in the proper way, allows us to uh, allows us to reach a diagnosis as well. So this is a, again one of the beauties of ABCDE assessment and management because not it not only like I said allows us to reach the uh, like keep the patient safe and stable, but it also through a proper systematic way allows us to reach a diagnosis. However, like I said, the diagnosis will take a back seat compared to the need for stabilizing the patient and keeping the patient alive. That is has to be the first priority. Uh, so, at uh, example, day, the patient apna kacha unconscious and you, you uh, like you have an uh, like we have an urge to think whether it's stroke or not. So there there might be an urge to get the patient down to the CT department to have the brain, CT scan of the brain. Uh, to make sure that the patient has whether to look for whether the patient has got stroke or not. But I mean, the ABCD assessment properly, Nakori, I might miss out on the fact that the patient is hypoxic, the patient has got signs of respiratory depression, the patient's airway is not protected, the patient is hypoglycemic and might have some impending hypoglycemic cardiac arrest as well. patient CT scan department to reach my diagnosis of stroke, the patient may well die on their way to having the CT head. So, agent is the most important thing ABCD wise patient to stabilize kora before looking, before thinking of the diagnosis. But if we do the ABCD assessment properly, the, the assessment itself will give me that diagnosis. So, uh, so, we move on to how do we actually do an ABCD assessment and management. Uh, you are the heroes. You are the heroes because you will be the ones who will keep the patient alive and stable before like uh, other people can come into play. For example, if I have a night duty question, I am like saying, I am saying, if I have a night duty question, patient at night is tired, the patient is tired, by the time um, the night is over and the morning uh, hours start, you will have a lot of support. You will have your other colleagues come in, you will have the your consultants come in, you'll have the other professors, your senior colleagues come in, you will have support from other departments as well. But overnight, you need to keep the patients alive because if the patient dies overnight, then all the support that you're going to have in the morning time is going to be in vain. If overnight patient is at any time, patient is ABCDE assessment and management is going to be your friend. So, uh, so talking about he, uh, ABCD assessment and how do we do it? So the idea is I'm systematically A, take a B, take a C, take a D, take a E jabo. We will start with A, then move on to B, then move on to C, then move on to D, then move on to E. But we will not move from one stage to another because before we have corrected any immediate problem which can be corrected immediately. So I'm different airway near deal coach, I'm airway the problem gold deal coach, she will immediately correct the problem, she will 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 immediately correct the problem, she will correct the problem, she will find the problem, she will address the problem, she will sort out 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 the problem, so uh, starting with the assessment and management of the patient's airway, the problems that we'll face in the patient's airway are two. Either the patient will lose the airway patency, in which case the airway will, will become blocked, or the airway is not protected from aspiration and then unwanted materials, which are not supposed to go into the lungs, will go into the lungs because the patient has aspirated. So either patient is airway at the Jekona corner block or the patient airway the patient aspirate coach. So airway blocker caron gula jegula hote pare, shopchi common caron the patient has a tongue fallback. Sometimes excess airway secretions lead to 
blockage of the airway because there's simply not enough, because of the profuse secretions in the airway, air cannot go in. Uh, sometimes a foreign body, for example, in choking can block the airway. And sometimes, for example, in conditions like anaphylaxis or epiglottitis, there may be a laryngeal edema, which can block the airway. So ASHOP condition occurs in airway, patency, and the airway can become blocked. On the other hand, if you have a patient coordinated with the airway, then the patient is at risk of aspiration. A common thought is that the patient gives them in Akhawai, patient aspirate Corbina. However, when it comes to aspiration, the patient's biggest enemy is the patient's own saliva. So there is a production of saliva that is always supposed to go into the GI tract rather than the airway. So Amra normal, obviously, we can protect our airway and we ensure that the saliva doesn't go into the airways. However, to the patient at risk, their own saliva, they can aspirate and that can have disastrous consequences, including very quick uh, onset of chemical pneumonitis and even ARDS as well. So so the first thing which the first clue that I will get is that I need to understand even before understanding whether airway is blocked on the airway problems have set in or not. I need to identify the other airway problem. So tongue fall back airway blocked by the other consciousness level low. Uh, laryngeal edema juno airway kade blocked hobe jader anaphylaxis by epiglottitis hocche profuse secretion er jonno airway block je kono manusher hote pare je sob condition e profuse airway secretion hoy however normal obosthay ei secretion gula kintu amra theke clear korte parchi kintu jara jader consciousness level lo tara ei sob secretion clear korte parbe na on the other hand choking uh, if somebody has got choking you will know like uh, the neuromuscular problem, they can the swelling reflexes coordinated, they can end up choking. So I need to identify from beforehand the cadre who are at risk of having airway. Aspiration air problem, cara prone, again, the other GCS low, they are prone to aspirating. Ebong, the other neuromuscular problem, so that they can't uh, coordinate the swallowing reflex. Even with a normal GCS, completely normal GCS, these patients are at risk of having air, uh, like aspirating. Uh, like things. So people like uh, having MS, people having TVS, people having MND, these people are, are at risk of uh, aspiration. So I mean, uh, identify the airway problem. airway problem, what are the clues that will tell me that airway problem has occurred? One is that the oxygen sats will be low because if somebody has got airway problems, the oxygen sats are bound to be low. If the airway is blocked, I can get transmitted airway sounds. I can get a noisy breathing. I can even get a strider. If the airway is blocked, then uh, the, there will be lack of air entry into the lung field oscal. Uh, like, lung field oscal, we have enough air entry. If the patient already airway protection, uh, protect the aspirate, then we have to find non features of aspiration pneumonia. And obviously, like I said, oxygen saturation will fall. So these are, the, these are the things which will tell me that airway problem already happened. So if I've got a fallen oxygen saturation, if I've got transmitted airway sounds and strider, if I've got a lack of air entry, or if I've got features of aspiration pneumonia, and if that happens in somebody who is already at risk of having airway compromise, uh, uh, in people have identified who can have airway pro problems, then that tells me airway problems has already set in. So how do I how do I deal with it? So obviously, Jader, who after I've immediately identified that these are the group of people who can have airway problems, I need to take steps so that they maintain their airway patency, and they don't end up aspirating. So airway patency maintain kora juna amadhi kiki upaya chhe, jude akha patient unconscious of ustaya thakhe, to prevent tongue fallback from blocking the airway, ami head up chin lift maneuver dhiye, patient ter airway thakhe open kore dhe chhe. Jude patient ter corner corner head injury ba neck injury thakhe, thal ami head up chin lift na kore, ami jaw thrust procedure patient ter airway open kore dhe chhe. Tar po jadir tongue fallback ke karne ta dhe airway block hote paare, ta dhe juna ami artificial airway use korte paare chhe, which are which can be an oropharyngeal airway or a nasopharyngeal airway. Jeta me strongly bishash kori. Jeta chhe any MBBS doctor, MBBS pash korpor should know how to use an oropharyngeal airway and should know how to use a nasopharyngeal airway. Ebang a jinish ta not only does a person know how to use these airways, this patient need to know the car khetre oropharyngeal airway use korbe car khetre. Nasopharyngeal airway use korbe, kon sizer airway use korbe. The agent school apne the gather thami jeta korche slide shesh. I've given some links. 
some basic YouTube video links. These are very easy to use, but make sure every MBBS doctor knows how to use it. The A duta Jinish Kora, I'm at least ensure Kurchi, the patient, tongue fall back a corner that the airway block Nahoe. Air oropharyngeal airway dawar age ba nasopharyngeal airway dawar age oboshyo check kore niben je patient er kono foreign body nai jeta patient er airway block kore jete pare so before you enter before you insert these airways just make sure you have looked for any foreign body which may be blocking the airway acha jodi onek shomoy patient foreign body karone chok kore tahole bls bls protocol e dekhano ache je how do you help a person who is choking again this is very basic thing all you need to do is look into youtube and just type in how do i uh, open up the airway from a foreign body if somebody is joking that there are good videos on that okay the patient laryngeal airway blocked then i need to take immediate steps to prevent a, a complete blockage so the partial blockage i mean already strider how should go in the correct context for example if somebody has been having anaphylaxis or epiglottitis the person if that person starts having strider i i know that this person is having partial airway Blockage. Patient to oxygen saturation to the fall color should occur, patient to the breathless or should occur, patient to the respirate better jar should occur. I know that impending complete airway obstruction is a risk. Shake Hetre, I need to immediately get my ITU colleagues and my ENT colleagues in because this person might end up needing uh, emergency intubation or this to the complete blockage. Hoy jet, okay, I mean endotracheal duo, look at the parvona, shake at the emergency, crico thyroidotomy, lack the parre. So, moment you see somebody who is at risk of having airway blockage due to laryngeal edema, for example, the anaphylactic or epiglottitic patients, that they do the apnecate money, there is an impending risk of complete airway blockage, immediately get your ITU and ENT colleagues to come bedside of the patient, because otherwise, if the complete block, the patient is going to die within minutes because no oxygen is getting into the body. Our etagello amikim have airway block take deal court the body airway to block with that. The patient airway control, swallowing reflex, aspirate. So again, identify the cadreta hotapare, tadir jono, optimize their position, regular suction current, the airways. Consider current the cadre jono intubation lag. Intubation act a kub important act decision. You are not supposed to take that decision by yourself, which is always an executive decision that should always involve the senior. Uh, physicians like the consultants of the like the senior physicians or the physician in charge and that should always involve a discussion with ITU so jader airway jara block korte parchena ebong jader aspiration heart sorry jader airway tara protect korte parchena aspiration theke ebong jader aspiration heart chance ache tader jodi eta kono immediately reversible condition er jonno na thake tale intubation needs to be considered but before intubation is done onek kichu Chinta korte hai, je patient ki fit for intubation na ki na, je patient ki intubate kore, ami ki dakhte bol winov korte parbo na ki na. Ye sab jinsho chinta korte hai, so always get your ITU colleagues involved. Kin, kintu if somebody has a low GCS, which is not due to a correctable condition, and the patient does not have any contraindication to having intubation, ami jodi patient ki jodi intubation lagi lagi thake, evong ami jodi eta na korte pari, patient will keep on aspirating and that is going to cause significant havoc in the lungs through chemical pneumonitis and ARDS by aspiration. And the intubation facility, the least I can do is I can optimize their position. So keep them in a left lateral position. So left lateral positioning is uh, is a position where which by which the chances of aspiration are slightly reduced. And I should regularly suction their airway so that any saliva or secretions, they don't end up aspirating. Okay, so we move on to... We move on to some pictorial slides. Jekhana ami eta jigula niya thekhon kotha bolam. Shigula niya kotha ekto kotha pictorial illustration amal thome dakhi. So if somebody has got airway blockage and there is no uh, there is no hint that the patient patient might have some uh, airway uh, like head injury or neck injury, thale tadhe airway open kora juna. I'm simply ekta head up chin lift maneuver diye tadhe I can open up their airway. So it involves put, put, putting one hand on the uh, putting one hand on the forehead, the other two fingers on the chin, pushing down on the forehead and pushing up on the chin to extend their neck so that the airway becomes open. So if the patient is unconscious, there is signs that the airway block. For example, there is lack of air entry into the lungs or the oxygen saturations have fallen. Immediately, the head up chin lift, the airway will open. The oxygen saturation will improve. 
যদি জিসিএস কম থাকে as i said there is a there you would need to use our pharyngeal airway or nasopharyngeal airway in them to make sure their airway remains patent so these are examples of oropharyngeal airways and these are examples of nasopharyngeal airways again slide er sheshe apnader gatharthe ami kichu link diyechi je jekhane they talk clearly about kader khetre oropharyngeal kader khetre nasopharyngeal kon size er choose korbo ebong kibhabe insert korte hobe but it's very basic all you need to do is just see the video okay so uh we move on to the next slide jeta hocche lastly always je kono karone jodi airway compromise hoy ami kintu bolechhi am je irreversible hole we start thinking about things like intubation but if it's like a reversible condition for example somebody jeta amar case one e dekhechilam the person has had an opioid overdose uh, jeta can easily be reversed with naloxone if somebody's gcs is low due to street poisoning ei patient intubation kora dorkar nai ei patient like in due time abar ফিরত আসবে বিকজ স্ট্রিট পয়জনিং গুলো সাধারণত রোড সাইড পয়জনিং গুলো সাধারণত ডায়াজেপাম জাতীয় প্রোডাক্ট দেওয়া হয় যেটা ইটস ভেরি ইটস ইউজুয়ালি অল ইউ নিড টু গিভ देम ইজ আ বিট অফ টাইম ইফ দা پیشنটস জিসিএস ইজ লো ডিউ টু আ হাইপোগ্লাইসেমিক কোমা ইফ ইউ ট্রিট দা হাইপোগ্লাইসেমিক দা پیشنট উইল স্টার্ট টু কাম ব্যাক ইফ দা پیشنট সো ইফ ইটস ডিউ টু রিভার্সিবল কন্ডিশন মেক শিওর ইউ টেক স্টেপস টু কারেক্ট দ্যাট কন্ডিশন এন্ড লাইক আই সেড এবিসিডি অ্যাসেসমেন্ট এন্ড ম্যানেজমেন্ট যদি প্রপার ওয়েতে করা হয় দ্যাট ইউ শুড ইন দা মেজরিটি অফ দা কেসেস ফাইন্ড আ রিজন find a reversible reason why the patient gcs is low if you can correct that then you do not have to go into drastic things like intubation to protect their airway because it may well be very reversible okay. now we so ami ekta patient er jokhon a niye deal korbo air problem gula sort address kore je gula immediately ami correct korte parchi shegula correct korei ami b te jabo so b is like managing the patient's breathing status so patient er breathing status niye jokhon amra kotha bolbo there are two types of problem we might end up facing one would be uh one would be lung related problem jeta theke hypox patient er hypoxia hote pare and the other would be if the patient has a ventilatory failure so that patient is breathing at 49 and there is a risk of impending or already occurred respiratory arrest jeta the patient has stopped breathing the respiratory our respiratory efforts are coordinated by our brain stem so kono karone jodi kono brain stem problem hoy jekhane amader respiratory effort chole jacche অথবা কোনো কারণে যদি আমাদের রেসপিটি মাসলসের কোনো সমস্যা হয় যেটা কারণে আমরা এনাফ রেসপিটি এফোর্ট দিতে পারছি না যেরকম ডিউরো মাসকুলার কন্ডিশনে হয় সেই ক্ষেত্রে দিস দিস মাইট লিড টু ভেন্টিলেটরি ফেইলিয়ার এন্ড দিস মাইট লিড টু ইমপেন্ডিং অর অলরেডি অকার্ড রেসপিটি অ্যারেস্ট সো আবার একটু বলি যদি پیشنটের কোনো ডিউরো মাসকুলার কন্ডিশন থাকে তাহলে রেসপিটি মাসলস আর উইক এনাফ সো দ্যাট ইউ ক্যান্ট ইউ ডোন্ট হ্যাভ দ্য স্ট্রেংথ টু টেক এনাফ এয়ার ইনটু ইওর বডি if you have a brain stem problem due to whatever reason it may be due to metabolic problems it may be due to a brain stem stroke it may be due to any intracranial infection but for whatever reason if you have a brain stem dysfunction then the the signal from the brain which coordinates your respiratory effort will take a hit in that case you are at risk of impending or you are at risk of already occurred respiratory arrest so this so any type of problem you have to deal with i will have to deal with lung problems with leads to hypoxia and i will lead i'll find problems with the patient's ventilatory effort so again a patient er jodi ami breathing status assess korte chai what i what i need to do is i need to look at the patient's oxygen sats that will give that is one of the most important things to do so make sure apnar je hospital e kaj karen jekhane e kaj karen je ward e kaj karen you always have access to a pulse oximeter because that will be you. one of your greatest friends when you work in the front door okay so and then after that you look for like cyanosis but don't think that just because somebody is not cyanosis that automatically means that the patient is not hypoxic because cyanosis is a late stage if i wait for cyanosis to appear and if i don't look at the pulse oximeter before that by that time the patient is already profoundly hypoxic so, and it should have been addressed a long time prior to that yeah so if you don't have access to pulse oximetry or if the pulse oximetry is being inaccurate then manually looking for like peri- uh, like just looking with your eyes for peripheral sinuses maybe your friend but like i said you should have access to pulse oximetry uh then comes the respiratory rate this is one of the most important things because respiratory rate is a very sensitive marker for uh, underlying like underlying pathology in in serious conditions be it due to hypoxia be it due to lung problems or be it due to anemia or be it due to cardiovascular instability tachypnea is very sensitive and if it it's one of the earliest signs of that the patient is deteriorating 
So make sure the respiratory rate is taken very seriously. এবং এরপর আমরা অনেকগুলো কন্ডিশন দেখব যেখানে পেশেন্টের কোন একটা সমস্যা কারণে পেশেন্ট হ্যাড আ ওয়াজ ক্রিটিক্যালি ইল এন্ড ওয়ান অফ দ্য ফার্স্ট থিংস হুইচ হ্যাপেন টু দ্য পেশেন্ট ওয়াজ আ রাইজ ইন দ্য পেশেন্টস রেসপিরেটরি রেট লুক অ্যাট দ্য রেসপিরেটরি প্যাটার্ন whether it's regular or irregular anybody who, who doesn't have a brain stem problem uh, should be having a regular respiratory pattern this is because especially if they're unconscious because if they're unconscious uh, their respiratory effort is uh, their respiratory effort is <coughs> coordinated uh, involuntary from the brain stem so if the brain stem is intact they should be having a regular respiratory pattern if there is any irregularity to the respiratory pattern for example the patient is hyperventilating any unconscious patient is hyperventilating or has a, having an irregular respiratory pattern that's worrying especially if they have a irregular respiratory pattern that may be a, a like indicator for an impending respiratory arrest if the patient is like gasping or has an irregular respiratory pattern just like be aware that this is dangerous uh then do a very quick examination of the, of the lungs it doesn't have to be a prof like final prof type examination of the lungs don't go into a very detailed examination of the lungs just put your stethoscope in uh, both the lung fields at various points and look for any obvious asymmetry any obvious crepitations any obvious wrong guy or any obvious uh, uh added sounds so agent just quickly it doesn't have to be a professional examination you don't abcd assessment you do not have to tell that there may be a whether this is a collapse or whether this is a consolidation or whether this is a fluid massive fluid effusion eigula eto detail amader pore amader shomoy ache immediate assessment amader just kono obvious asymmetry in the uh, breath sounds kono obvious crepitations kono obvious wrong kai kono other as uh, added sounds ache na kina jodi kono asymmetry thake then then do a quick percussion examination of the lungs as well to see uh, make sure that you don't miss out on a pneumothorax as is the tracheal position because in conditions in dangerous conditions like massive pleural effusion or uh, tension pneumothorax the tracheal position may be deviated ebong lastly jeta korbo jeta amra initial b te korbo na amra c te jokhon jabo tokhon amra kichu blood nibo shei blood e one of the bloods we must take in the c assessment is the abg blood gas analysis so ab once the abg report is back and that can wait till the whole abcd assessment is done but once it's back make sure you look at the abg analysis to look at the patient's partial oxygen pressure the patient's carbon dioxide pressure the patient's ph as well uh then again like i said eta this looking at the abg analysis can wait wait till your whole first abcd assessment has been completed however this forms part of your abcd assessment so just keep mindful of, uh, just be mindful of that for example in patients who have who have got poor peripheral circulation due to whatever cause their oc pulse oximetry will not be reliable so karo jodi bp kom thake tahole kintu pulse oximeter amake proper oxygen saturation dibe na erroneously wrong saturation dite pare amake kono saturation nai dite pare so if i don't look do the abg analysis i will not i will just i might erroneously say this patient is hypoxic but this patient may just have an erroneously false oxygen saturation recording just because they are poorly perfused because of a low blood pressure so this is where abg analysis will help tell you whether the patient is actually hypoxic or the, the spo2 was just being uh, erroneous because of a poor peripheral perfusion so abg te ami partial pressure of oxygen ta accurately tokhon dekhte parbo so before moving on to c make sure je problem gulo ami amar assessment e pick up korechi shegulo ami treat kori so amader patient er jodi hypoxic thake i should not move on to c before i have taken steps to correct that hypoxia uh, amar emon na je amar hypoxia puro puri correct kore tapor c te jete hobe but at least i should take some steps to initiate the action of treating the hypoxia before i go on to c kono patient er jodi already kono lung bhorti orang kai thake ask somebody to get you a nebulization patient er jodi kono karone kono profuse secretion thake do some suctioning so egula address kore not necessarily puro puri complete kore but address kore go on to c so how do we manage the patient's problem so one would be like i said correct the hypoxia if there is any impending respiratory arrest অথবা রেসপিরেটরি অ্যারেস্ট হ্যাজ অলরেডি টেকেন প্লেস দেন দ্যাট ইজ ডेंजरस ইমিডিয়েটলি টেক স্টেপস টু ম্যানেজ দ্যাট এবং ম্যানেজ দ্য আন্ডারলাইং কন্ডিশন ফর দ্য ব্রিদিং স্ট্র্যাটেজি ডিস ফাংশন ইফ ইউ ক্যান ইমিডিয়েটলি কারেক্ট ইট লাইক আই সেড যদি কোনো রংকাই টংকাই থাকে তাহলে پیشنট অথবা কোনো সিক্রেশন থাকে সেগুলো ডিল করে কর শুরু করে দ্য پیشنট মে बेनिफिट फ्रॉम सम ইমিডিয়েট নেবুলাইজেশন দ্য پیشنট মে बेनिफिट फ्रॉम সাকশনিং অফ দ্য সিক্রেশন হুইচ ইজ লাইক ক্লগিং আপ দ্য এয়ারওয়েজ এন্ড থিংস লাইক দ্যাট বাট how so how do we deal with hypoxia hypoxia is extremely dangerous hypoxia kills 
patients can end up having cardiac arrest due to hypoxia. In fact, hypoxia is one of the main reasons why a patient has cardiac arrest. So always, always, always take hypoxia very seriously. Always, and that, in, that needs you to understand and pick up and identify that the patient has got hypoxia. That, so that is why the importance of having, the, having access to pulse oximeters and having access to arterial blood gas machines. And also you should know how do you treat hypoxia. So hypoxia treat color jo naam the method gula the the forces that we have in place is a nasal cannula which can give you roughly around up to probably high as four liters per minute of oxygen. The simple face mask jeta which can give you at oxygen uh, like which can give you oxygen support at around five to six liters per minute. So if somebody requires oxygen oxygen support at one to two four liter per minute use nasal cannula. Do not use the simple face mask because if you're using the simple face mask to give a low flow of oxygen at say two liter per minute or three liter per minute, the patient might end up retaining carbon dioxide. There is a theoretical risk. So if the four liter beshi lage, use the simple face mask, which can give you around five to six liters per minute of oxygen. If the air beshi lage, the non-rebreathing mask is your friend. This is a very powerful device because the non-rebreathing mask with the reservoir can give you 15 liters of oxygen. That's massive. That's almost close to 85% of oxygen. So if, if somebody is profoundly hypoxic or in any or in any critically ill patients, always put a non-rebreathing mask with a reservoir in the patient. So check on a patient patient profoundly hypoxic, do not even think of trying to use the nasal cannula. Do not even think of using the face mask in any patient. I know some people think that a patient is COPD as a patient kicking non-rebreathing mask. That can take a back seat. Yeah. In your initial ABCD assessment, if the patient is critically ill or if the patient is profoundly hypoxic, always put a non-rebreathing mask with the reservoir in them and give them oxygen at 15 liters per minute. That put other cotton to oxygen data have it other key oxygen saturation 94 to 98 to maintain corbon like 88 to 92 maintain corbon. If I do the ABCD quickly, I can come back to that and take that decision. But in the initial assessment, always put a non-rebreathing mask with a reservoir, which can give you 15 liters of oxygen at around 85%. So the question then is, when do we start to use a venturi mask? And what is exactly a venturi mask? Okay. So it, a venturi mask, our initial ABCD management is Venture mask often as well. Jokon initial ABCD management shesh column, the Honabar patient can revisit column, Jeki Hoche. The Honjit and pick up for the patient is at risk of carbon dioxide retention, or for example, a COPD patient who has had carbon dioxide retention in the past or is known to have chronic carbon dioxide retention. The Hon Kinto, Tadar oxygen saturation, I'm a revisited hobby to eighty eight to ninety two percent. Ebong Tahalama Tadaki Totti oxygen dita hobby. And it, it doesn't have to be low flow. I have to give them whatever oxygen they need to maintain an oxygen saturation of 88 to 92. On a patient gets two liter of oxygen, patient gets oxygen, patient carbon gas retain. That is not true. The target is always 88 to 92, and you have to give them whatever oxygen they need to maintain that saturation. If they need end up needing 10 liter, that they get 10 liter. Now, our target is 88 to 92. 88 to the niche, the patient is going to be harmed. On the, on, on the other hand, the 92 is the patient is harmed. So I have a narrow range of 88 to 92%. If the patient is harmed, the patient is harmed. The patient is harmed. The patient is harmed. The patient the problem with things like face mask, nasal cannula, and the non-rebreathing non mask is these are called fixed flow oxygen devices. certain velocity oxygen. They don't give, I don't know, Jame Kotutuk oxygen Pabo. That will depend on how far, how fast I'm breathing. So what I know is, what I know for sure is non-rebreathing mask, I'm okay, highest 15 liter per minute oxygen. What I know for fact is face mask, I'm okay, highest around six liter per minute oxygen. But I don't know, I mean, we oxygen patch it, I'm going extract corpo. So the funny thing is, whatever oxygen you're getting, if your respiratory rate is high, then you extract less oxygen. If your respiratory rate is low, then you extract more oxygen. So, if you have oxygen, you can extract oxygen. It depends on that is inversely proportionate to your respiratory rate. So, I'm going to tell you that the non-breathing mask is 15 liters per minute oxygen. So, that is equivalent to 85% oxygen. That I, will, that I can only assume if the patient has got a normal respiratory rate. However, if that same person has got a massively raised respiratory rate, then the person will give, be getting at 15 liter per minute, much lower percent of oxygen. It may be around 50 or 60% oxygen. So 
এটা একটা সমস্যা হয়ে যায় তো আমি একটা پیشنট যদি রেসপিরেট ভ্যারি করে তার মানে তাকে আমি যদি ফেস ম্যাস্ক বা নন রিব্রিদিং ম্যাস্ক দিয়ে অক্সিজেন দেই তাহলে কিন্তু আমি জানবো না যে তাকে সে এক সব সময় একই পরিমাণ অক্সিজেন পাচ্ছে না কিনা হুম কারণ তার রেসপিরেট ভ্যারি করছে ইন দ্যাট কেস তার অক্সিজেন স্যাচুরেশনও কিন্তু এদিকে ওদিকে লাফ হবে তাই না তো তাদেরকে যদি আমি চাই যে দে নিড টু বি মেইনটেইন এট অ্যান 88 টু 92 परसेंट অক্সিজেন স্যাচ দেন আই মাস্ট এনসিওর that they are always getting the same amount of oxygen and this is where the venturi mask is my friend because with that i can always ensure that the patient always have a like fixed percentage of oxygen so venturi mask is called a fixed performance device while the nasal cannula face mask and the non breathing mask are called fixed flow devices so fixed flow device amake ekhi rate e dibe but i don't know the koto tuku percentage pabe আর ভেনচুরি ম্যাস্ক আমাকে সবসময় একই পরিমাণ অক্সিজেন দিবে রিগার্ডলেস অফ মাই রেসপিরেটরি রেট সো দ্যাটস কলড আ ফিক্সড পারফরম্যান্স ডিভাইস সো বাট ইন দ্য ক্রিটিক্যালি ইল پیشنট ডোন্ট থিংক अबाउट ভেনচুরি ডোন্ট থিংক अबाउट সিওপিডি কার্বন ডাই অক্সাইড রিটেনশন when you do your first abcde assessment because we ক্ষেত্রে সবসময় স্টার্ট দ্য پیشنট অন রন রিব্রিদিং ম্যাস্ক ওনলি কাম ব্যাক টু রিভিজিট দ্য नीड ফর ভেনচুরি ম্যাস্ক ওয়ান্স ইউ হ্যাভ ডান ইওর abcde assessment and have stabilized the patient ওকে সো এই ক্ষেত্রে আমরা যেটা করছি আমরা একটু কয়েকটা ডিভাইস গুলো যেগুলো নিয়ে কথা বললাম সেগুলো একটু কয়েকটা পিকচারাল ইলাস্ট্রেশন দেখে নিব দিস ইজ আ সিম্পল ফেস ম্যাস্ক যেটা আমরা যেটা বললাম যে 5 টু 6 লিটার পার মিনিট অক্সিজেন দিতে পারে দিস ইজ আ ফিক্সড ফ্লো ডিভাইস এটা আমাকে আমি জানি না এটা আমাকে কতটুকু অক্সিজেন দিবে কারণ দ্যাট উইল ডিপেন্ড অন মাই অক্সিজেন দ্যাট উইল ডিপেন্ড অন মাই রেসপিরেটরি রেট বাট এটা আমাকে ইন টার্মস অফ ভেলোসিটি আমাকে 5 থেকে 6 লিটার পার মিনিট দিতে পারে দিস ইজ ইওর নন রিব্রিদিং ম্যাস্ক এটা আমাকে সব সময় 15 লিটার পার মিনিট অক্সিজেন দিতে পারে ইফ আই এম ইফ মাই রেসপিরেটরি রেট ইজ অলরেডি ইট ক্যান গিভ মি আ হাইয়েস্ট আপ টু 85% অক্সিজেন ইফ আই এম ব্রিদিং মোর র‍্যাপিডলি দেন দা অক্সিজেন ইট গিভস মি ইজ স্লাইটলি লোয়ার এন্ড দিস ইজ ইওর ভেনচুরি ম্যাস্ক সো ভেনচুরি ম্যাস্ক ইজ ইন্টারেস্টিং বিকজ ইট হ্যাজ আ ফেস ম্যাস্ক দেন ইট হ্যাজ আ পোর্ট যেটা দিয়ে একে বিভিন্ন কালার কোডের ফিল্টার অ্যাড করা হয় যেমন এই ফিল্টারগুলো ডিক্টেট করে যে এই پیشنট কত परसेंट অক্সিজেন পাবে যদি আমি একটা পার্টিকুলার রেটে দেই সো এটা 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 এই ছবি দিয়ে বেটার ইলাস্ট্রেটেড হচ্ছে সো ইফ আই ওয়ান্ট টু গিভ देम 24% অক্সিজেন অলওয়েজ দেন হোয়াট আই नीड टू डू इज आई नीड टू कनेक्ट दिस লাইট ব্লু ডিভাইস এন্ড গিভ देम অক্সিজেন অ্যাট 2 লিটার পার মিনিট সো আমি ওদেরকে 2 লিটার পার মিনিট করে দেব এন্ড দ্যাট উইল অলওয়েজ এনসিওর হোয়াটএভার দ্য রেসপিরেটরি রেট ইজ দে অলওয়েজ গেট 24% অক্সিজেন If I want to give them 28% oxygen, then we have a wide device that gives them 4 liter per minute oxygen. So, the 4 liter per minute delay, whatever the respiratory rate, they will always, if I use this device, they will always get 28% oxygen. If I want to give them 31% oxygen, then I need to use the orange device and give them oxygen at 6 liters per minute. If I want to give them 35% oxygen, then I need to use the yellow device and give, give them 8 liter per minute oxygen. Forty percent is only red device use group, and I need to give them oxygen at ten liters per minute. Or if fifteen liter oxygen is there, the sixty percent oxygen is there. Then I mean, if a green device they use group, then they get fifteen liter per minute oxygen. So the the important thing is, a a category that I mean, as I said, Bharat Bharat can come So if the COPD patient, I mean, first we decide group, so that if they get enough oxygen, they are eighty eight to ninety two percent maintained. This can be a forty. This can be a ten liter per minute. This can be like uh, 35% at 8 liter per minute this can be 60% at even 15 liter per minute kintu amar age identify korte hobe je tadeke koto tuku oxygen dile their oxygen saturation are being maintained at 80 to 92 ekbar jokhon ami eta peye gelam tokhon jate tader varying respiratory rate jate tader oxygen percentage ta ke ulta palta na korte pare that is for that i need to use the venturi mask because with venturi mask i know for a fact they will always be getting that same percentage of oxygen whatever the respiratory rate is and that can help ensure that their oxygen saturation are maintained in, in that narrow range between 88 to 92 where it comes which is dangerous and it takes away which is dangerous but again like i said venturi mask takes a back seat and should only be considered after the initial abcde assessment is done at our but the beauty is non rebreathing mask so make sure apna je hospital e kaaj karen you always have access to the non rebreathing mask with the reservoir bag because this can give you quite a lot of oxygen at 15 liters per minute this is going to be your friend in the initial abcd uh, abcde assessment of the critically unwell patient so we then move on to so eta gelo hypoxia kibhabe amra treat korbo jodi amader when jodi amader non rebreathing mask keo na hoy 
that that is the highest we can go isn't it so air for the patient air hypoxia me correct not got the body hypoxia kills and leads to cardiac arrest so i'm looking the hypoxia treat good day hobby so i'm the number of the being that's the up now with the body the hello what do i do this is where i start getting itu involved because if somebody's lungs is so bad the 15 liter per minute oxygen dark or the other oxygen saturation treat color that's an i and if i have treated the other reversible condition for example i've treated their bronchospasm i've treated excess secretions i've treated airway blockage think that for the other oxygen the other oxygen saturation utana that's enough this means that this patient's lung condition is really 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 bad so shake it right whether the patient now i know the patient needs more support so there is a logic if they can take intubation and if their oxygen saturations are not being maintained by 15 liter we should straight away go to mechanical ventilation and intubate them to get itu involved however due to mechanical ventilation amar kache immediately available na thake othoba ami eta jodi appropriate na for example if it's an elderly patient jar already multiple comorbidities ache jake ami intubate korle ami take win off korte parbo na then it's probably not in the best interest of the patient so orokom jodi khetro hoy othoba jodi amar intubation access na thake for example the patient is a, in a government hospital jekhane itu beds enough nei tokhon my the other options i i have with me are things like high flow oxygen a cpap or bipap এগুলা নিয়ে আমি খুব বেশি কথা বলবো না বিকজ দিস আর ভেরি ভেরি সফিস্টিকেটেড থিংস এন্ড দ্যাটস ইজ নট পার্ট অফ দা লাইক ইনিশিয়াল ফ্রন্ট ডোর ম্যানেজমেন্ট বাট আপ একটু কথা বলি হাই ফ্লো অক্সিজেন ইজ লাইক ক্যান গিভ ইউ 60 টু 80 লিটার্স টু অফ অক্সিজেন এট अराउंड 100% সো ইট ক্যান গিভ ইউ अराउंड 100% অক্সিজেন এট अराउंड 60 লিটার্স পার মিনিট সো ইট ক্যান গোস আপ টু লাইক 4 টু 6 টাইমস as much as the flow that a non rebreathing mask can give you so non rebreathing ma- non rebreathing mask can only give you oxygen at 15 liters per minute however uh, the high flow devices can give you oxygen at 60 to 80 liters okay and it can give you almost 100% oxygen but high flow doesn't give you positive pressure ventilation so what positive pressure ventilation is je eta it not only gives you a lot of oxygen and it not only gives you a very high flow of oxygen but it drives air into your lungs through positive pressure so eta korle koy ekta subidha ache subidha hocche ek number subidha hocche je it opens up your collapsed alveoli in the lungs dui number subidha hocche because it's driving air into your lungs you do not have to worry about uh taking air like your respiratory muscles uh are being helped because respiratory muscle jeta normally due to the patient onek koshto kore hyperventilate kore tachypneic hoy respiratory muscle prochondo work kore je air te nichilo shei kaaj ta kichu tuku relieved hocche because now we've got a device jeta already respiratory muscle kichu effort niye niche kon that is driving the air into your lungs so the respiratory muscles need to generate a lot of effort to get the air into your lungs is kind of reduced so positive air pressure ventilation ei jinish ta amake kore to ei jinish ta kora karone eta ekta subidha hoy karon if if i can reduce the respiratory muscles work rate so if i can reduce the tachypnea of the patient tahole dui ta subidha hoy ekta chhe that prevents exhaustion of the patient so patient jodi exhausted hoye thake tahole ekta porje kintu patient er oxygen need thaklo respiratory muscles exhausted hoye geche they have tired out so that is very dangerous so eta prevent korar khetre cpap ba bipap er ekta role ache ar dui number hocche ki if the respiratory muscles are working really high then they in even though you you're getting enough oxygen into your body just imagine the amount of oxygen which is being wasted by your respiratory muscles so you're getting enough oxygen into your body but a lot of oxygen is being wasted by your respiratory muscles and the respiratory muscle will work rate ta komiye dite pari tahole those useful oxygen can then go to the useful organs like your kidneys like your heart like your lung uh, like your liver your brain hmm, instead of being wasted by the respiratory muscles so in such case cpap or bipap are a role that they are there so they can in this way they are better than high flow however cpap or bipap is extremely distressful for the patient to take because the patient is feels that other i mean it's like a, being stuck to a mask and it's extremely like uh, it's very, some people can't tolerate it at all so onek shomoy jeta kora hoy patient ke ektu sedate kore eigula dewa hoy so kintu tar pore eta patient er jonno prochondo distressful ebong oneke tolerate korte pare na jader tolerate korte pare na tader jonno cpap ba bipap eta contraindicated ebong tader jonno high flow however the main logic is if their lungs are so bad that they're needing a, a, enough oxygen on top of what we can give them through a 15 liter they might end up needing mechanical ventilation if and if you delay it through giving cpap or bipap or high flow then it may 
actually be delaying the inevitable and this may be harmful for the patient. So again, these are very executive things, complicated things. Make sure you discuss this with the ITU first and then decide on it. CPAP, BiPAP would be more of a help or a high flow would be more of a help if you have not got immediate facilities for ventilation or if the patient is not suitable for ventilation. Otherwise, probably the patient should move straight to ventilation without delay. So it only all put to Kotha Bullam, but CPAP BiPAP, this has their own contraindications. So before giving them, just make sure you have ruled out the contraindications. One of the contraindications would be a low GCS because they are at risk of aspiration. And if they can't protect their airway, and if I'm driving air through positive pressure ventilation at a very high velocity, they can end up aspirating from their own airway. Okay, so Akon uh, I've given okay. So the second problem which we which we would be dealing with is if they have they're at risk of impending respiratory arrest, or about other respiratory arrest you already hoigating, which basically means they're not breathing. If that happens, you need to get air into them from outside through your own efforts. So you have to drive the air from outside into their lungs because they have lost their effort to do it because they've now had a respiratory arrest. So respiratory arrest to the hoijai, tell what do you do? The first thing you do is do a head up chin lift maneuver to open their airway and immediately connect them to the ambu back. So a the patient is not breathing. You have done a head up chin lift maneuver. You have connected the ambu back with mask and you have connected the ambu back with an oxygen source. You have connected the oxygen source at say 15 liters per minute and you're driving air into their lungs. Because otherwise, if you don't do that, they will, they're gonna die in the next one to two minutes because they're simply not breathing and getting enough oxygen. If you can do that, and if you can keep on giving them enough air into their lungs, <coughs> then if the patient needs intubation and mechanical ventilation, that probably <coughs> might take around two, like if even if you get, get an ITU doctor to come in and or any doctor to come in and do intubation, that's probably going to take two to three minutes at the earliest. <laughs> ventilation can be one of your uh, best friends. আচ্ছা and connect the ambu back to an oxygen giving device and keep on giving them breaths by yourself. Hmm. Even better than, than an ambu back ventilation is what we call an IGL airway, which you can connect to an ambu bag. Hmm. So IGL airway te ki korte? It's it's one of it's what I call a miracle de, miraculous device because it is extremely cheap. It is extremely affordable. Like the dam It is extremely easy to use. Je kono doctor MBBS pas korpo ita use koto arbe. Even like it's so easy to use. So what you do need to do is you need to do a head up chin lift maneuver for the patient and then just push the eye gel inside. Just kono kichu it can be done blindly. You don't have to visualize the trachea. You don't have to visualize anything. All you need to do is do a head up chin lift maneuver and push the airway in. Direct. What it will do is it will it will seal off the esophagus and it will seal off the opening of the uh, the larynx as well. All the air that you're pushing will directly go into the trachea. মাস্ক কিছু কিছু স্যালাইভা তখন এয়ার দ্বারা পুশড হয়ে লাংসে চলে যেতে পারে সো দ্য پیشنট মাইট অ্যাসপিরেট আই জেল ইজ মিরাকুলাস বিকজ হোয়াট ইট ডাজ ইজ ইটস গোনা সিল অফ ইওর ল্যারিংস সো এনি সিক্রেশনস দ্য پیشنট হ্যাজ ক্যান নট ক্যান নট গো ইনটু ইওর ট্রাকিয়া সো কারণ আই হ্যাভ সিলড অফ দ্য ল্যারিনজিয়াল ওপেনিং সো হোয়াট আই এম ডুইং ইজ থ্রু দিস এয়ারওয়ে আই এম কানেক্টিং দ্য আউটসাইড এয়ার ডাইরেক্টলি টু দ্য ট্রাকিয়া এন্ড অল দ্য এয়ার দ্যাট আই এম পুশিং ইন is going in directly into the trachea without going into the esophagus and because the trachea uh, because the larynx has been sealed off 
no secretions can't go into the trachea so the patient doesn't aspirate this is a miraculous device to use because it's like i said it's very cheap very easy to use and because it's so effective it can you can if you do put an IGL airway and ventilate the patient then you can keep the patient alive for the next two to three hours till a definitive action can be taken. So after you like the patient to respiratory arrest time, get an IGL airway in, connect the IGL airways opening to a to an ambu bag, connect the ambu bag with a 15 liter oxygen and keep on ventilating through that IGL airway. That will buy you around two to three hours time. Way do you think the patient is going to reversible coronary respiratory arrest hai? You can sort that out. For example, opioid overdose by naloxone coronary jyudhi hoi thakye. Othoba kuna hypoglycemic coma kuna jyudhi hoi thakye. Othoba if you think those two to three hours will be the time that you need to transfer the patient to ITU, this, two, this ITU will keep the patient alive for the next two to three hours. Okay. So we now move on to the patient's assessment and management of this patient's circulatory status. Hmm. Circulatory status assess karajana, we need to look at the following markers. What we need to do is we need to look at the patient's pulse rate, we need to look at the patient's blood pressure, we need to look at the patient's capillary filling time, we need to look at the precardium, we need to look at the patient's lung base, we need to look at the patient's JVP, the hydration status, the temperature of the peripheries, we need to immediately do a bedside ECG, we need to take immediately take bloods and gain a vascular access from the patient for the patient. And these are the things we need to do immediately. So, jeta kor, ame jeta dekbo pulse dekbo pulse rate dekbo pulse rhythm dekbo pulse ta kis strong na kina shi jinsa dekbo. Acha, we we'll look at the blood pressure. Capillary filling time is very sensitive because in any condition, in any condition, jekhane peripheral perfusion kome gaye chhe, pulse blood pressure affected hoar agar nakshma capillary filling affected hoar. So, what I need to I need to be very expert in how to judge capillary filling time. Any capillary filling time if it's more than three seconds is worrying because it says that the heart is not being able to generate enough perfusion to the peripheral uh, peripheral parts of the body. So the capillary filling time has been elevated. Hmm. I'm a quick like precardium assessment. Corbo. I do not need to correctly diagnose, diagnose mitral stenosis or mitral regurgitation. All I need to do is look at the heart rate, whether it's regular or irregular, what is the heart rate, whether there is any evidence of gallop rhythm or not, and whether there is any ev obvious evidence of any added murmurs or not. I do not need a correct diagnosis for a pulper to uh, like heart disease. Don't waste your time on that. Time is precious. Lungs, I already examined correctly. I mean, I will quickly base of the lungs examine corbo because I'm looking for things, uh, evidence of pulmonary edema. I look at the JVP. I look at the patient's hydration status. I mean, patient er skin turgor dekbo, patient er tongue surface kirukum sheta dekbo, urine color kirukum shigula dekbo. Temperature of the peripheries is a, is a sensitive marker for a hypoperfusing state. So if the patient's tempor peripheral temperature is low, hmm. I mean, this, this is worrying because of what it suggests is the heart is not generating enough blood into the peripheral tissues. And so the peripheries have started to become cool. If the periphery thandai pai, they decide to quote, what is the demarcation between the cold and the warm areas? So for example, if, if only the hands are cool and above the wrist, the the temperature is warm, then it act a meaning bohan kore. Abar jodi patient elbow po jonto thanda tha kare only elbow ro kore warm tha kare, then it are more serious jinish indicate kore serious hypoperfusion indicate kore. As part of your C, always do a bedside ECG because this can give you various clues whether the patient is arrhythmic, whether the patient has got a dangerous tachyarrhythmia or not. So always do a bedside ECG and as part of your C, always uh, always get a, a vascular access get a vascular access take some bloods and put a cannula emergency blood so take a full blood count take a blood for lfts take blood for electrolytes take blood for blood urea and creatinine levels take bloods for uh, crp to look for sepsis take an abg abg is going to be your life-saving friend so abg uh, take blood for abg and may in ketrobishashi take blood for calcium magnesium and things like that as well the ABG will give you the lactate levels. And lactate level, again, is a sensitive marker for tissue hypoperfusion. If the patient has got tissue hypoperfusion, in that case, lactate level, very jabe. I'll just take two seconds. I need to get a charger in because my uh, laptop is running out of charge. So just if you just kindly give me five seconds, I'll be back within five seconds.
so sorry for the interruption so jeta bolchilam so circulatory status er assessment er koyekta purpose ache amar sobche important purpose hocche amar patient er volume status bujha patient ki hypovolemic naki patient fluid overloaded because that's going to be one of the important things which will define am ekta patient er hemodynamic unstable instability kibhabe treat korbo whether the patient needs fluid whether the patient needs vasopressors whether the patient needs inotropic support or not a quick circulatory assessment amake also idea dibe je patient er peripheral perfusion ki kharap obostha naki na so if i just wait for the blood pressure and pulse ta ebong i don't look at the temperature of the peripheries i don't look at the capillary filling time ta hale kintu ami onek shomoy pick up korte parbo na the patient might be uh, hypoperfusing the peripheries ekta patient jodi peripheral hypoperfusion and i'm pick up korte pare that automatically means the patient is not only hypo perfusing the peripheries but is also hypoperfusing vital organs like the brain the kidneys and liver so ekta patient er jodi erokom kono condition thake je khane tar peripheral temperature peripheral perfusion kome giyeche she tahale tar mane tar she tar obosshoi brain kidney ebong liver ebong other vital organs er perfusion o kome jacche so eta jodi ami properly pick up na korte pari i won't pick up the danger ebong ei jinish ta dekhar jonno amader like i said amar peripheral temperatures amar capillary filling time amar urine output ei jinish gulo amake ekta idea dibe আমার ল্যাকটেট লেভেলস এগুলো আমাকে একটা আইডিয়া দিবে মেক শিওর বিফোর গোইং অন টু ডি লাইক আই সেড ইউ টেক দ্য ব্লাডস এন্ড ইউ গেট আ ভাস্কুলার অ্যাক্সেস বিকজ ইউ শুড নট ডু আ নিউরোলজিক্যাল एग्जामिनेशन টিল ইউ হ্যাভ প্রুভ ইউ হ্যাভ টেকেন সাম ইমার্জেন্সি ব্লাডস এন্ড হ্যাজ হ্যাভ পুট আ ক্যানুলা ইন প্লেস সো দ্যাট ইজ পার্ট অফ ইওর সি অ্যাসেসমেন্ট অ্যাজ ওয়েল সো সি এস এবং আরেকটা হচ্ছে আমাকে অনেক সময় কিছু কজও বলে দিতে পারে যেমন پیشنটের আমি বেড সাইড ইসিজি করছি সেটাতে আমাকে پیشنটের কার্ডিওভাস্কুলার ইনস্টেবিলিটির জন্য কি এমআই দেয় নাকি কোনো ডेंजरस ট্যাকি আরিথমিয়া দেয় সেটা আমাকে একটা আইডিয়া দিতে পারছে আচ্ছা আর অনেক সময় ওয়ান্স ইউ হ্যাভ ডান ইওর এবিসিডি অ্যাসেসমেন্ট লাইক আই সেড বিকজ হোয়েন উই রিভিজিট মেক শিওর পালস চেক করার সময় ইউ যদি সম্ভব হয় পোস্টারাল এফেক্ট অন পালসটা আপনি একটু চেক করে নেবেন blood pressure check kora shomoy postural effect on your blood pressure check kore niben and read the abg especially to look at sodium potassium which may be causing uh, like hemo uh, like cardiovascular instability due to a problem in in sodium and potassium levels and you also check at the check the lactate levels because the lactate level is very a sensitive marker for peripheral hypoperfusion at so you need to check kore niben but this thing will take a back seat and should wait till your initial abcde assessment has been done so prothome postural effect on pulse by postural effect on blood pressure check korte jen na prothome abg report er jonno wait koren na before you go finish the dne but when you revisit check the abg results check the abg results apni immediately oxygen po2 pco2 ebong uh, blood er ph chhara apni modern abg machine gulo apni karo ekta important jinish Marker uh, like a quite result there. They, they, they tell you the blood glucose level. They, they tell you the patient's hemoglobin level. They tell you the patient's lactate levels. They tell you the patient's sodium levels. They tell you the patient's potassium levels. All these things are extremely vital information to take a very quick decision on the patient. Hmm. For example, like a patient with a significantly hemodynamically unstable type, when ABG result time they claim hemoglobin has massively dropped, um, I immediately start to get worried whether the patient has had a massive internal bleeding if there is no external bleeding. Hmm. so these are part of my circulatory status assessment how do i manage the patient's uh, circulatory status and uh, make sure the patient is circulatory wise safe i need to optimize the patient's fluid status this is extremely important ha huh? always one of the main purposes of a, the c assessment and the c management is to ensure that you have taken all steps to ensure the patient is euvolemic ha huh? so at the patient ke jodi patient jodi হাইপোভলেমিক থাকে বেশ তাহলে আমি আমার সি অ্যাসেসমেন্টের ভুলের কারণে আমি پیشنটকে ফ্লুইড দিতে যেতে ব্যর্থ না হই অন টপ অন দা अदर হ্যান্ড একটা پیشنট যদি ওভারলোডেড থাকে তাহলে যাতে আমি প্রপারলি পিকআপ করতে পারি এবং پیشنটকে যাতে ফারদার আননেসেসারি ফ্লুইড না দেওয়া হয় সো ওয়ান অফ দা মেইন থিংস अबाउट সি অ্যাসেসমেন্ট এন্ড সি ম্যানেজমেন্ট উড বি টু অপটিমাইজ দা پیشنটস সার্কুলেটরি স্ট্যাটাস এবং দ্যাট রিকোয়ারস আ ভেরি গুড আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ডিং যে پیشنট কি আসলে ওভারলোডেড না پیشنট হাইপোভলেমিক ইউজ করা হয় এখন আর খুব একটা ডোপামিন ইউজ করা হয় না দ্যাট হ্যাজ লস্ট ইটস ফেভার বিকজ দের ইজ সিগনিফিকেন্ট প্রুফ যে ডোপামিন লিডস টু সিগনিফিকেন্ট হার্ম ফর দ্য پیشنট সো আইনোট্রপ হিসেবে কমনলি যেটা ইউজ করা হয় দিস ইজ ডোপিটামিন ফ্যাজোপ্রেসারস হিসেবে ইউজ করা হয় নরএড্রেনালিন হুইচ হ্যাজ গট সাম আইনোট্রপিক এফেক্ট অ্যাজ ওয়েল দিস আর এক্সট্রিমলি 
like complicated decisions, never take it by yourself. These are not decisions for the front door. Always use, involve ITU. And ideally, if somebody needs vasopressors or anotrop, they should be done in an ITU, HD, or CCU setting, uh, and not in the usual words, and not without cardiac monitoring. So for example, vasopressors, do the patient underlying volume depleted condition? Thake, tahale ami, take volume optimized kora apodin toka ami vasopressor kotha chinta korbona. To take kotuku fluid dithabe, shet depend kobe underlying cause a geno, a cause a rupor. For example, if the patient has got significant dehydration from, say, conditions like DKA or a massive internal bleeding, uh, say, upper GI bleeding or lower GI bleeding or external hemorrhage, tahale kinto take plenty of fluid among blood dithabe. I should not even think of vasopressors before optimizing their what they have lost their fluid status because if i do that the patient will be harmed so when do i start thinking of vasopressors only after i've completely ensured that i can be dr fluid loose course you can put to replace kora poro bp marchena on the other hand sometimes it is that i go the patient call to fluid dower body patient overloaded how it's true if the patient bp icon of talking about the vasopressors support like the body on a trauma sepsis type condition eh the high level of all do take in liter amount of fluid dower for a bp in our eyes correct talking on a trauma Vasopressor lack the pale. Due to patient are going to underlying primary cardiac problem at our name, patient hemodynamically unstable thake, Tokono in Tonexomai, and Tokono to Anotrop Lagbe. For example, if the patient has had a massive MI, they can take a cardiovascular instability, Hoyte, Talahota early consideration of uh, early consideration of Amar Inotrops Lagbe. Hmm. So, a shop condition, I mean, uh, Tokon Chinta go to the Vasopressor by Anotrop Lagbe Nakina, but always involve your colleagues from IT or CCU before taking a decision on this. As part of our, uh, the, as part of the management of the patient's circulatory status, one of the things we need to correct is if there is any emergency tachyarrhythmia, which can be quickly corrected, we need to aggressively treat it. So if the patient is going tachyarrhythmia, they can the patient hemodynamically unstable. I need to immediately sort that out. By definition, any tachyarrhythmic condition, if that has been found to be the reason for the patient's hemodynamic instability, that needs to be having, uh, that, that, that person needs to urgently have DC cardioversion. If that is not possible, then I need to explore what other steps I have to slow down the heart rate. On the other hand, if it's like a, it doesn't always necessarily have to be a tachyarrhythmia, it can also be a bradyarrhythmia as well. So, do the patient have a bradyarrhythmia, for example, complete heart block, uh, or say, uh, well, any any condition, the kind of heart rate is very low, and that is causing hemodynamic instability, then I need to take steps to correct that bradyarrhythmia as well. So. So the question is, if patient here, if I am bedside ECG course, she circulatory status assessment. She has to be immediately like idea about the patient here. Can it dangerous tachyarrhythmia, but bradyarrhythmia? Is it not? Even whether that is leading to hemodynamic instability or not, and then I need to treat the underlying cause as well. So, uh, for example, if the patient is uh, has got a GI uh, like cardiovascular instability due to a hypoglycemic problem, I need to correct that. If it's due to any electrolyte imbalance, which is causing dangerous tachyarrhythmia or bradyarrhythmia, I should treat that. Uh, if there is, it's due to a volume loss condition, like a significant bleeding, I need to arrest the source of bleeding. If it's due to an MI, which is causing cardiogenic shock, I need to treat the MI. So treatment of the underlying cause is also very important in the management of the patient's circulatory status, but that sometimes can wait till we move on, till we move on to finish the ABCDE assessment. So after that, we move on to the, the D, that is the assessment and management of the patient's disability status. So disability, quickly our patient blood sugar to the We'll do a very quick recording of the GCS. We'll look at whether the patient is alert and oriented or not, whether the patient has got any gross focal neurology. So it doesn't have to be a proper neurological examination like the prof style. All we need to do is patient has a particular lateralizing sign as in Akina. For example, Kono Dik Nart, the Hagala Kono particular uh, right side uh, of the body not chana. Hmm. The plantar examination across the excite like clearly extensor plantar response but see Othoba eyeball gula same positioning neck eyeball hotel the hatch deviated huh other pupils are gonna gross asymmetry of facial symmetry they're gonna gross asymmetry so quickly I make a neurological examination corpo to pick up any gross neurological problem I'll quickly look for signs of meningism like I said, I'll look at the pupils and look at the reaction to light. After ABCD assessment is done, in some relevant cases, I might need to do the fundoscopy as well. But again, this has to be very quick because I, I not only need to finish doing it, but I need to move on to E and then I need to revisit 
revisit the patient's ABCDE status. Make sure, as I've put in three stars, you always check the capillary blood sugar of the patient because that is one of the vital things which you can't afford to miss and that should be part of your DE assessment as well. E is, like I said, for everything else. So check the temperature, do a very quick abdominal examination. Again, front door, it, 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 does, it does not, you do not need to do a prof examination style abdominal examination. Whether the patient has hepatomegaly or the patient has splenomegaly is not important at all in the front door. In the front door, look for signs which will kill the patient. So what will kill the patient is a surgical abdomen if you can't pick that up. So whether there is any signs of peritonitis. So look for any significant tenderness with rigidity. Look for any guarding. Look for any rebound tenderness. Look for absent bowel sounds. Hmm. This will tell you that it's a peritonitic abdomen. And if you don't address it immediately, the patient might die. So do a very quick abdominal examination. Look at the limbs, whether there is any asymmetry, which can suggest DVT, whether there's a bipedal edema, whether there's any rash. Look whether the patient is like grossly anemic or jaundiced or not. In unconscious patients where urine output measurement is extremely important, do a catheter. In relevant cases, for example, if the blood sugar is really high or in sepsis or in a hypertensive crisis, look, do the bedside urine dip. This can tell you whether the patient has conditions like DKA or not, whether the source of sepsis is urinary or not, whether from high hypertensive crisis the patient's kidneys are being damaged or not. Look for flapping tremor, which can be present in conditions like hepatic encephalopathy or carbon dioxide retention. Do a generalized skin survey to look for any source of sepsis or any anaphylaxis, and to take a very quick history. From Dore, ABCD assessment part, I'm a history to quickly nibble. Uh, a detailed history can wait till after the ABCD assessment and management has been done. So quick history of the Kikarna patient, Ashlo, what is the patient's drug history? So to put it all together, like I said, start with A, move on to B, C, D, E systematically before moving from one step to another. If there is any immediate correctable step, uh, if there's any correctable abnormality, take steps to correct it before moving on to the next stage. So, I'm right. A, A, B, C, D, T, I can cook shunder for a shot to kiss it. Apply for more. For example, prosum case is a head. So, I'm ready to go to the issue. This is a 40 year old man who's come in with a low GCS. I'm our eight a data volatile. I have to identify people who are at risk of losing their airway. So, I'm our eight a properly GCS record for the current. I'm easily the patient of the unconscious way for poor as a patient. GCS is extremely low. So, even without recording the GCS, which can wait till the D stage, I immediately know. The patient is at risk of losing their airway. So I'm going to do the patient ke left lateral position. Rang po. Patient is going to secretion thake, shata suction korbo, that the patient aspirate na kore. Patient is at the tongue fall back thicke airway block na hoi. Juna miki korbo patient erecta airway di In this case, probably a oropharyngeal airway. That will stabilize the patient A wise. I'll have in the in the back of the mind that this patient might end up aspirating anyway. Con left lateral position in the patient ke aspiration properly prevent corbin aspiration risk. So the patient might need intubation. I'm at a math hire cami beat the jabo. I'm going to intubate corbin obviously. Can I meet a math hire cami beat the jabo? Beat the game declam the patient's respiratory rate is dangerously low at eight. Any any respiratory rate below 12 is at risk. Is at uh, is a indicator for impending respiratory arrest. So a patient respiratory rate to the eight thake, I start getting really, 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 really worried. So shake at time I keep I immediately should ask my colleague, can you get me an ambu bag ventilation? Can you get me an eye gel? Currently, the patient is immediately respiratory arrest. So, we have an eye gel. We have an ambu bag. We have an oxygen source. We have an oxygen source. We have an Again, because the respiratory rate is so low, and if the patient ends up having respiratory arrest, the main definitive treatment would be intubating the patient and mechanically ventilating the patient. If we have an ICU, we may need to be involved. B, the amylaclum oxygen saturation, I can 98% ache and the lungs are clear. This is reassuring for me because even though the patient is at risk of aspiration, can the acono aspirate hot or no corini? But that doesn't mean the patient is not at risk. BP is slightly low. So, C, the amy patient immediately blood nilum, blood near the cannula perculum. And I, because the patient doesn't appear fluid overloaded, I start the patient on some. Liter of fluid. Hmm. Achha. C is the same thing. C is the same We need to be very careful in recording the patient's fluid status. On a time, I'm wrong. 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 I'm wr
একটা پیشنটের লাং রিপিটেশনের জন্য অনেক डिफरेंट কারণ থাকতে পারে अपार्ट फ्रॉम ফ্লুইড ওভারলোড সো پیشنট ক্যান বি স্টিল বি ভেরি ডিহাইড্রেটেড এন্ড হ্যাভ রিপিটেশন ইন দ্য লাংস দ্য রিপিটেশন ইন দ্য লাংস ক্যান বি ফ্রম এআরডিএস দ্য রিপিটেশনস ইন দ্য লাংস মে বি ফ্রম ইনফেকশন ক্যান বি ফ্রম এনি ফাইব্রোসিস সো সো জাস্ট বিকজ লাংস এ রিপিটেশন আছে তার মানে কিন্তু پیشنট ফ্লুইড ওভারলোডেড না একটা پیشنট যদি ফ্লুইড ওভারলোডেড থাকে তাহলে তার লাংস এ পালমোনারি এডিমা রিপিটেশন থাকবে তার সাথে তার রেসপিরেটরি রেট বেশি থাকবে তার সাথে তার প্রিকার্ডিয়ামে গ্যালোপ রিদম থাকবে তার সাথে তার জেভিপি রেজ থাকবে তার সাথে ইফ দ্য پیشنট ইজ কনট্রাস দ্য پیشنট উইল টেল ইউ হি ইজ হ্যাভিং শর্টনেস অফ ব্রেথ জাস্ট বিকজ লাংস এ রিপিটেশন আছে যদি কারো জেভিপি রেজ না থাকে কারো গ্যালোপ রিদম না থাকে কারো যদি ফ্লুইড ওভারলোডের অন্য কোনো ফিচার না থাকে ইট ডাজেন্ট নেসেসারিলি মিন দ্য پیشنট ইজ ফ্লুইড ওভারলোডেড অন দ্য अदर হ্যান্ড কারো যদি ডিহাইড্রেটেড থাকে তাহলে আমি কি কি পাবো হিস্ট্রি থেকে পাবো দ্য پیشنট হ্যাজ প্রবলেম নট বিন ইটিং এন্ড ড্রিংকিং ওয়েল অর হ্যাজ lost a lot of fluids the patient's urine will be dark in color jvp will not be raised tongue ta ekdom dry thakbe skin turgidity ekdom kom thakbe hmm. skin turgidity will not like the skin will lose its turgidity the patient will appear very dry the te- the temperature of the periphery is may be cold ekta patient cardiogenic shock theke fluid overload holo tar temperature periphery cold thakte pare ebong shei khetreo capillary filling time raise thakte pare but that can also happen in dehydrated states as well hmm. so agent is gula khub bhalo kore bujha so coming back to this case a uh, patient to bp it to lower dikhe ebong patient doesn't have any features of fluid overload so i give the patient i immediately get the get a candle and start the patient on some fluids the heart rate is 60 slightly on the low side but bedside ecg hasn't shown any evidence of any like dangerous bradyarrhythmia okay i move on to d the blood sugar is 5.7 so i know the that hypoglycemia is not a cause for the patient's low gcs on top of that there is no focal neurology and there is no asymmetry so i probably know that this is probably not a stroke which is leading to the low gcs it may well be but at this moment what it shows is i do not need to rush to a ct here because at this moment i'm going to lateralizing sign pine the gcs is low 5 by 15 and the pupils are extremely pinpoint so in somebody who's on palliative meds who might take morphine and now who has got respiratory depression and cardiovascular depression with pinpoint pupils this has already give, given me a diagnosis of opioid over dose ebong i have done that through a proper systematic abcde assessment kin to dear por ami to ite jabo to quickly ensure that the patient uh, is not hypothermic or the patient doesn't have any surgical abdomen or any signs of dvt as soon as i have done that i go back to the patient i immediately request some naloxone and i keep an eye on the respiratory rate the respiratory pattern the oxygen sats whether the patient is aspirating or not এই জিনিসগুলো কারেক্ট করতে হবে پیشنট যদি নালোক্সন পাওয়ার পরে پیشنটের অর কনশাস লেভেল পিরিয়ড না আসে এবং پیشنট ইজ এট পারসিস্টেন্ট রিস্ক অফ হ্যাভিং ইমপেন্ডিং রেসপিরেটরি অ্যারেস্ট অর অ্যাসপিরেশন আই মাইট ইনটুবেট नीड टू ইনটুবেট দ্য پیشنট মুভিং অন টু কেস নাম্বার 2 সো কেস নাম্বার 2 তে अगेन দ্য হিস ইফ আই ডু আ প্রপার সিস্টেম্যাটিক অ্যাসেসমেন্ট এ তে আই স্টার্ট গেটিং ওয়ারিড বিকজ আই ইমিডিয়েটলি সি দ্য پیشنটস জিসিএস ইজ এক্সট্রিমলি লো সো দ্য پیشنট মাইট এট মাইট বি এট রিস্ক অফ aspiration and the patient might be at risk of tongue fall back causing airway blockage so what i do is i immediately put the patient in the left lateral position to reduce the risk of aspiration i immediately uh ask somebody to get a, a oropharyngeal or nasopharyngeal airway so that it uh, they, they don't block their own airway i immediately have it in the back of my mind that they might need in uh, itu support hmm. okay and i need jodi kono secretion thake shegulo ami clear kore dicchi i move on to b b time I already that the patient their oxygen saturation fall course so I immediately start the patient on 15 liters of oxygen the respirate is raised and it is irregular this suggests to me that there might be a intracranial cause which is leading to cardio respiratory depression ebong the patient might be at risk of impending respiratory arrest so i immediately tell one of my colleagues to rush to itu to get one of the itu doctors involved because the patient is at risk of impending respiratory arrest uh, i immediately ask somebody to get me a i gel and ambu bag ventilation so that to the itu doctor ash that the patient respiratory arrest i can i can at least ventilate them through the i gel and through the ambu bag the patient has already started to aspirate another reason why itu might need to be involved and the patient might need to be intubated because the patient's has lost control of their airway and i put the patient like i said on 15 liters of oxygen eta korte korte ami sita gelam sita giye patient er blood pressure ebong heart rate uh it's nothing that i need to immediately correct i've done a bedside ecg by which i've ensured that the patient doesn't have any underlying bradyarrhythmia so there is not anything i need to do immediately through c assessment i'm here to pick up for the patient to go no peripheral so even if the bp is normal the patient may still have peripheral hypoperfusion but the temperature of the periphery is warm the capillary filling time is not prolonged so i can 
uh, I move on to D. D the GCS is low, pupils are mid dilated and has a very sluggish reaction to light. This is worrying. Again, this shows that the patient has got some brainstem dysfunction. And again, another reason why I need to immediately get IT involved because the patient would probably need intubation and ventilation. IT temperature declam, the patient is not hypothermic, the abdomen doesn't sound any peritonitic, and the limbs doesn't show features of DVT. So it it I got the ABCD assessment core fellow. I'm waiting for ITU to come. I've taken immediate steps to stabilize the patient by giving them urgent oxygen. Uh, and I mean ABCD assessment properly correct the care. I mean, already a diagnosis of pay getting like a patient to do the ITP take the platelet let come start sudden onset severe headache. The history time he eat a gay patsy. Even now she unconscious. Even he's got signs of brainstem dysfunction as manifested by a irregular respiratory pattern, a high heart rate, uh, sorry, low heart rate, a raised BP and mid dilated pupil, which is sluggish, which has got sluggish reaction to light. So until otherwise proved, the patient has got a massive intracranial hemorrhage, which is compressing the brainstem from raised intracranial pressure. Moving on to case number three. So this patient is a 55 year old man who ha has history of abdominal pain and vomiting. So I'm mean, I'm not worried about the airway. I'm mean, oxygen sets are normal. The lungs are clear, but the patient is tachypneic. Because the oxygen sets are normal and the lungs, is uh, lungs are clear, the raised respiratory rate is probably not due to a lung issue, but maybe a, due to a, a, some other cause like a low, uh, like high, low BP or anemia. So I do not need to do anything to correct it. I can go on to C. C I mean, the patient's BP is low. I immediately take blood from the patient. I immediately put a cannula in place and I immediately start fluids before thinking of anything else. And I can start the fluid because I've done a proper uh, fluid assessment of the patient and the patient is not fluid overloaded. So a patient can be, uh, fluid dawa shuru kollam. Airport, I mean, a fluid dawa shuru patient and blood pressure will start to come up. The high heart rate, I've ensured that this is probably not atrial fibrillation. So I've done a bedside ECT, which looks sinus. So I'm a rasha hotse, I'm a fluid, the BP barano shatha shatha, heart rate of common shuru kolbe. On top of that, the capillary filling time is prolonged, again, possibly due to a low BP. So hopefully, I'm the dana fluid, the tapari, patient, capillary filling time will start to improve. Ebola kot, ebong, I've taken bloods, which includes ABG as well and other bloods, including full blood count, CRP, LFTs, electrolytes, urea, creatinine, and um, and uh, clotting INR as well. I go to the D assessment. D assessment, I check the GCS, which is fine, but I also ensure the patient is not hypoglycemic. A blood sugar of 3.5 is low, but it's not an low enough to explain the whole hemodynamic unstability of the patient. But tarpor jehito blood sugar low, ami je fluid to sugar consume normal saline, which I can change kore DNS de dilam. Not. Patient of focal neurology nine, patient could meningism nine. So I know that the patient is not like that does not have any condition like a meningococcal septicemia. Eta kore ami ite galam. Ite gya ami abdomen uh, I ensure that there is no sign of peritonism because it may well be a it may well be that the patient is peritonitic, which is causing sepsis, which is causing the hemodynamic instability. But the abdomen is doesn't have any features of peritonism. Limbs are soft, non tender, so I ensure that the, nothing like a cellulitis or a DVT is causing the hemodynamic instability. But I look at the general skin survey, which I mean, eat a curry, and check and decline. The patient has got generalized blackening of the skin. On top of that, temperature is slightly low. If you eat, I make a quick history and I'm declining the patient has been having some non specific low grade fever and night sweats and tiredness and lethargy for the last one month. So ABCD assessment Korea, I mean, already patient to fluid day resuscitated Kora Shuru Korechi. I've ensured that they've taken steps so that the patient doesn't have any hypoglycemia, but I've also through a proper ABCD assessment has have, have reached diagnosis of possible adrenal insufficiency crisis. So I've started the patient. I've given the patient some steroids as well, but after taking bloods for cortisol levels. Case four again. Uh, this is a 60 year old man who's, who the nurse suddenly found hypoxic and tachypneic. So I mean, A the prothome jet the clam the patient alert. So I don't have any worry about the patient's airway. I'm B the chalegalam, she can oxygen sets are extremely low. So I immediately start the patient on 15 liters per minute of oxygen. Respirate is high, but that is probably from hypoxia. However, the lungs are clear. So I mean, Mathara clam the patient oxygen saturation jet the comta get the lungs cannot clear. Move on to C. C the gay BP is slightly on the low side. I take some and the patient doesn't appear fluid overloaded. So I take some blood from the patient, put the cannula in start a liter of fluid. The heart rate is also high again, possibly from hemodynamic instability. D 
I, uh, I see that the patient is not hypoglycemic and the patient doesn't have any focal neurology, neither th does the patient have any signs of meningism. So I move on to E. E take here, I make sure the patient doesn't have any peritonitic abdomen. But when I look at the legs, I see that there is an asymmetric leg swelling. So an asymmetric leg swelling, the two possibilities are whether the patient has a DVT, whether the patient has cellulitis. Cellulitis is a feature, nine. temperature also could have to raise now. So could show the cellulitis now, whether this is DVT. I go on, go back to the ABCD assessment. I'm patient care, patient was hypoxic. 50 liters, okay, patient oxygen saturation, uh, adequate, the patient might end up, whether the patient would need ventilation or not. However, I mean, ABCD assessment could have also systematically reached a possible diagnosis. In somebody who is hypoxic and now has, but has clear lungs and has tachycardia and has tachypnea and has signs of DVT and is at risk of having DVT, Mm -hmm. Until otherwise proof, this is probably a PE. I need to, and this has given me the diagnosis. So while I correct the patient's oxygen saturations, I need to immediately investigate for a PE. Okay, so case number five. Eh? This is a 70-year-old man who presented to the hospital with shortness of breath for the last three hours. He's got a history of ischemic heart disease, COPD, hypertension, and diabetes. So I'm not worried because the patient's airway, there's no concern. I, I start getting worried because the patient is hypoxic and has got a tachypnea and there's bivalsal repetition on the lungs. So before moving on to C, I must start the patient 15 liters of oxygen, even though he has the COPD history. But I still need to, because the patient is ill and, and the oxygen sets are low, I need to start the patient on 15 liters of oxygen. I go to C. C, I'm even more worried because the patient's blood pressure is low and heart rate is really, really high and JVP is raised. So I know from my assessment that the patient is fluid overloaded. So I possibly cannot start the patient on fluids. But the patient's heart rate is dangerously high. I need to do an ECG, which I've done. Bedside ECG, what I found is the patient has got a narrow complex tachycardia, which appears irregular. I immediately know that the patient has probably got some features of hemodynamic instability and some heart failure, uh, given the fact that the patient's tachypneic has hypoxic, has got evidence of pulmonary edema and has got raised JVP. So I know the a dangerous heart rate thicken. Not only a patient cardiovascularly instable, the patient has got features of heart failure as well. So what do I need to do? I possibly cannot give the patient furosemide to offload the lungs because the patient's BP is low. But what I need to do is <coughs> I need to immediately slow down the heart. Our asha is patient heart rate is slow down. The patient heart beat more like the patient heart rate at the time, the patient heartbeat gula coordinated with a beat court the part chana i mean you take a slow down court the very hard the heart's pumping effect will be improved then the heart can pump in more bloods to the periphery so the lungs will automatically be offloaded blood pressure improve cardiac repair but blood pressure overload uh, improve cardiac repair i can give the patient some furosemide as well i've done the rest of the abcde assessment see the gami patient and bloods near team bloods near take on it because uh jet of the patient is dangerous arrhythmia she dangerous arrhythmia কোন ক্যালসিয়াম ম্যাগনেসিয়াম পটাসিয়াম বা কোন ব্লাড সুগারের জন্য হচ্ছে না কিনা বা কোন সেপসিসের জন্য হচ্ছে না কিনা বা কোন অ্যাসিডোসিসের জন্য হচ্ছে না কিনা সেজন্য কিন্তু প্রপারলি এবি সব ব্লাড নিয়ে নিয়েছি এন্ড বাট আই নিড টু স্লো ডাউন দ্য হার্ট নাও বিফোর মুভিং অন টু ডি সো ওয়েদার আই নিড টু ইফ ডিসি কার্ডিও ভার্সন আই হ্যাভ ইট দ্যাট উইল বি দ্য ট্রিটমেন্ট অফ চয়েস अदरवाइज আই আই নিড টু ইউজ ডিজক্সিন বিকজ আই ক্যান্ট ইউজ বেটা ব্লকারস আই ক্যান্ট ইউজ ক্যালসিয়াম সামল ব্লকারস a decision will need any time in detail to like alarm did i just ensure the patient is not hypoglycemic and the disease is normal with a low blood pressure one of the risk is the patient might start hypoperfusing the brain and that is dangerous among one of the features of shock is a lower gcs because you're not perfusing your brain enough but the gcs is fine there's no like the patient is alert and oriented i go to e to ensure that the patient doesn't have any peritonitic abdomen and no dvt and it's not like a hyperthermia or hypothermic emergency which is good driving the really high heart rate once i've done that i go back to abcd again i mean i need to slow down the heart J, J action time in each issue to get a course in a kina shit like a patient your oxygen saturation improve course in a kina patient blood pressure improve course in a kina it is glamour sort out kora moving on to case number six this patient has come in with an abdominal pain on a background of nephrotic syndrome air when you are going to buy name beat the lungs you are going to buy even though the respiratory rate is high but that is with a clear lungs and with normal oxygen sets that is probably due to some other reason See the game the clump patient here BP on a calm heart rate patient sinus capillary filling time more prolonged So I know the patient is not fluid overloaded So I immediately take some blood from the patient and start immediate fluid because my concern is to raise the blood pressure <clears throat> Acha. So I'm a uh, fluid rock there. I have taken blood from the patient. I go on to D 
there, I ensure the patient doesn't have any low GCS, doesn't have any meningism, and doesn't have any hypoglycemia. The patient doesn't have it. But I've also, but I've, then I will move on to E. E take care the patient ascites, and patient has got a very tender abdominal palpation as well. So I already probably have a diagnosis in place because I know the patient has got nephrotic syndrome and has ascites. If the abdomen is tender on palpation and if there's any features of sepsis, for example, the temperature is raised, the BP is low, the patient until otherwise has got SBP with sepsis. So eat the corapore, I mean, I'm going to a, B, C, D, E, T, E, 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 is uh, resuscitated. One of the ways in which we can give fluid very quickly is giving 250 ml boluses over time. So, ki korbo patient a bedside darabo patient a volume assessment dekbo patient ke 250 ml fluid over a period of two to three minutes debo. Ita niya kono bhaya na kono 250 ml is basically just one glass of water. Ita niya tamon kono khoti hobe na patient re. So 250 ml dekbo ta patient a response dekbo. Patient a blood pressure jato kono na kono to improve korte jato kono constantly erkom Fluid status dekbo, 250 ml bolus dibo, the proper our fluid status check corbo. The proper 250 ml dibo, the proper fluid status check corbo. The proper 250 ml dibo, the proper fluid status check corbo. You can cut the tag, cut the tag, cut the tag, but until otherwise, uh, until the patient actually becomes overloaded, in which case the patient might need vasopressors or the patient's blood pressure has started to come up. However, I mean, I'm a diagnosis of sepsis, so to proto magonta modi, I mean, liter fluid dark or a patient in blood pressure improve nakore. I need to start considering whether vasopressors are needed or not. I need to speak to ITU. Case number seven, I look at this patient who's got a history, uh, like jetabolum diagnosis, it's GBS, but diagnosis can take a back seat. Ete, I'm worried because the patient has got a neuromuscular disability involving the vulvar muscle because history tables to the patient jet, uh, so patient is at risk of aspiration. So I mean already at the back of my mind, I already think the patient might need some intubatory or ventilatory, uh, like mechanical ventilation support. My worries are confounded because I find features of aspiration. So the patient is hypoxic, the patient has got right-sided crepitations as well. So I mean already the patient aspirate corbe nakina, the patient already aspirate for a shurukorache. On top of that, the oxygen saturation is low. So I need to correct the oxygen sats. Even though the patient is hemodynamically unstable, hemodynamically stable, but there is ectopic bits in the ECG. Uh, it's, if somebody has got a neuromuscular condition and now there is some ectopic bits in the ECG, this points towards whether the patient is developing card like you know, autonomic dysfunction and putting the risk at uh, putting the patient at risk of uh, arrhythmia and even a cardiac arrest. So I start getting worried. I go on to D do a very quick examination to find out that this is a flaccid paraparesis rather than a like spastic paraparesis. And it in, not only involves the upper limbs and lower limbs, but involves the bulbar muscles as well. So I've done the ABCDE. I've ensured the patient's diagnosis is GPS, but even before that, I've ensured the patient's oxygen saturations were, have been corrected. I've picked up the fact that the patient is at risk of aspiration and I have involved emergency ITU as well, whether they need to intubate the patient. Ideally, this patient should be intubated. Okay, so principles of ABCD, like I said, so these were seven beautiful cases. Jekhan Amra, a genius color systematically solve korte parchi. I'll quickly uh, give a few other examples. Jekhan Amra ABCD assessment ko beautifully, uh, quickly and beautifully sorted korte pari. So this is a 46 year old man who's come to the hospital after being found lying unconscious in the road. Ami arkono history janina. So Ami prathame unconscious jehito. I'm worried the patients have, about the patient's airway. So patient's airway is low, uh, GCS is low. So the patient is at risk of tongue fallback causing airway block. And the patient is also at risk of aspiration. It has been a patient immediately left lateral position. A column patient, uh, you're going to see Christian Thakke, she will clear column. Even patient air at the airway, the dilemma that the patient air tongue fallback take airway blockage. Now, how patient in this is low. The aspiration of the very chance. I have it in the back of my mind that ITU might need to be involved to intubate the patient, but, but I still don't know because I need more information. I go on to B. I found that there's no abnormalities in the respirate, oxygen sats, or lung examination, tracheal positioning. So even though the patient is at risk of airway compromise, I airway compromise, hoi ni. Our respiratory rate by pattern of consumption, I 
respiratory imminent respiratory arrest hobe she bhoy ta amar nai c te giye again i find no worries so i move on to d d te giye the only problem i find is gcs is low i need to check the blood sugar to ensure the patient is not having a hypoglycemic coma but the blood sugar is normal as well je kono low consciousness level patient can be due to stroke but my examination has not shown any focal neurology has not shown any lateralizing signs so while the patient might still need a ct this will take a back seat because at this moment stroke uh a stroke uh point out korar jonno tamon kono history nei i go on to e e te uh i've done the rest of the examination everything is normal so what has happened to this patient who has been found on the street is probably this patient has had a roadside poisoning involving diazepam jeta patient er like consciousness level ke depress koreche this is jara hospital government hospital e kaaj koreche amra jani the roadside poisoning is something very reversible and the patient starts coming around it may take around 5 6 hours for the patient to come around this is usually reversible reversible so age jonno a patient er hoyto kono drastic things like i t u or intubation lagbe na all i need to do is joto kon consciousness will improve kore toto kon patient er have taken steps so that the patient doesn't aspirate and the patient doesn't have any tongue fallback causing airway blockage that is all i need to do case number 9 involves a 20 year old female who was brought to the hospital after having a sudden onset of shortness of breath associated with extreme restlessness and agitation this is the history i get she was even completely normal even a few hours back then she doesn't have any medical illness e te gie i immediately get worried because air entry lung field e thik moto paoa jacche na and there is presence of stridor so i immediately get worried because the patient is at risk of uh impending uh airway block so what do i need to do i immediately need to call my itu and ent colleagues e dekhe dakte dakte ami I I get I move on to B. B te ke deklam lungs bhorti ra widespread wrong kind. To prevent that, uh, to address that, I ask one of my colleagues to get some urgent nebulization. Oxygen sats are extremely low at sixty percent. I need to start the patient on fifteen liters of oxygen. Trachea is central. The respirate is alarmingly high at fifty per minute. So while giving the patient fifteen liters of oxygen and while requesting for urgent uh, nebulization, I go on to C. C te ke there is no evidence of fluid overload. But the blood pressure is blood pressure is perilously low. So immediately blood now report. I start the patient on fluid, running fluids, huh? Because I need to treat the low blood pressure. The heart rate is also high, but this is probably sinus tachycardia from the low blood pressure. So if I can treat the flu, if I so the fluid should address the high heart rate and the low blood pressure. The capillary filling time is three seconds. Peripheries are well perfused, hmm? but I know the patient probably has shock. So whether the patient has a shock with the well perfused periphery so whether the patient has something like a distributed shock whether this is sepsis whether this is anaphylaxis these are the things running through my mind i go to jvp uh, i like i find the jvp is not raised so there is no evidence of any pulmonary edema i go, so patient ke fluid shuru kore ami chole gelam d te d te ke dekhlam patient is extremely agitated but there is no focal neurology and there is no signs of meningitis so possibly the patient doesn't have any meningococcal septicemia uh on a common hypoglycemia the patient has cardiovascular instability thake but i have ensured the beep, the blood sugar is normal so i move on to e e the shop kitchen normal chilo but when i look at the skin there is widespread arterial rash ebong tar mani hocche it has already given me a diagnosis of anaphylaxis i immediately request for adrenaline adrenaline request korte 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 ami shot chole gelam abar e te এতে দেখলাম پیشنটের স্ট্রাইডর আর ওয়ার্সেন করেছে না কিনা যদি پیشنট কমপ্লিটলি এরওয়ে ব্লক হয়ে যায় ডিউ টু লারিনজিয়াল এডিমা দা پیشنট উইল নিড আরজেন্ট ক্রিকো থায়রোডোটমি پیشنটের যদি স্ট্রাইডর আরো খারাপ হয়ে যায় এবং অক্সিজেন স্যাচুরেশন যদি আরো ফল করে দা پیشنট মাইট নিড ইনটিউবেশন বাট বাই দ্যাট টাইম আই এম ব্যাক টু মাই এ হোপফুলি আমার আইটি ইউ এন্ড ইএনটি কলিগস আর বিসাইড মি এন্ড হোপফুলি আই হ্যাভ গিভেন দা پیشنট সাম অ্যাড্রেনালিন অ্যাজ ওয়েল অন টপ অফ দ্যাট বিকজ আই নো ইটস আ ডায়াগনোসিস অফ অ্যাড্রেনাল অ্যানাফিল্যাক্সিস আই নিড টু গিভ দা پیشنট আরজেন্ট স্টেরয়েডস and some antihistamines as well but the trick would be to get itu and ent colleagues beside me and to get the uh, adrenaline into her system we move on to case number 10 this is a 73 year old man who is presented to the hospital with alto level of consciousness for the last one day it theke beshi amra arektu jani je patient koto char din jabot he has been having productive cough this we know is a it's a background where he has ischemic heart disease heart failure copd diabetes hypertension and osteoarthritis i move on to a there is no concern i move on to b the oxygen saturation is alarmingly low i should immediately start the patient on 15 liters of oxygen even even if he has a history of copd because he is critically ill and i need to correct the hypoxia aggressively the respiratory is high but i that, that tells me the patient has a underlying lung problem the lung 
doesn't show any widespread wrong guy, just only scattered wrong guy, but shows coarse repetition on the right base. So until otherwise proved, because the patient's GCS is normal, so probably hasn't aspirated, but until otherwise proved, this is probably a pneumonia involving the right lungs, which has led to hypoxia and tachypnea. The trachea is central. So patient gave 15 liter per minute oxygen through the non-rebreathing mass dawar porpori, ami chole galam, sithe. Sithe gaya deklam, the patient, heart rate is high and is she, he has got atrial fibrillation and has got a blood pressure of, of 85 by 55. The peripheries are well perfused. The capillary refilling time is slightly elevated. There is no evidence of any pulmonary edema. On, on, the, on, like, on the contrary, the patient appears slightly dehydrated. So what should I do? I should immediately take blood from the patient and put the patient on some fluids. I said, this is where it gets interesting because I'm a fluid to debo, got to fluid debo. The patient has got a history of heart failure. Tell him patient get fluid debo nakina. And the heart failure patient took into dehydrated hota pare. She is dehydrated, that are fluid lagbe. That's the shoja hisha. Kinto, I make an 18 year old jacke jeva fluid debo, atul liberally kinto again heart failure patient get fluid dite, parbona. Because there's always a risk the patient came, fluid overload bani di the body. So ki korbo, a patient bedside darabo, a patient can. A fluid assessment called the patient overloaded nakina. The economy janit the patient overloaded and dehydrated. So I make two fifty ml bolas debo. Two fifty ml bolas there are shatashatami debo, the tarki ami overload korchinakina. Do the Nakore take it, I came out of fifty debo. Erokum kore dita tako dita tako, Jotokuna potent the patient either dehydration corrected hotse, Ottoba blood pressure improved cortese, Ottoba on the other hand, patient overloaded hojace. With the overloaded, we shall my boots for the patient came out fluid with the parbona. Airport to the patient hemodynamically unstable, the patient might need vasopressors. I need to get ITU involved. What do I do with the atrial fibrillation? So, after I have a second attack, it may be the hemodynamic instability cause code. Tahale, I need to DC cardio the patient. So, a patient direct attack, it may ask a patient cardiovascular instability. However, the atrial fibrillation is not what is causing the hemodynamic instability. What is causing the hemodynamic instability in the form of low blood pressure is dehydration, is and is the underlying condition of a pneumonia and hypoxia. So possibly the atrial fibrillation is a complication rather than the cause of a hemodynamic instability. So what I, I do not need to worry about the atrial fibrillation by itself because what I know is the patient is, has got an infection, has got hypoxia and has got dehydration and hypovolemia as well. All these things are possibly leading to atrial fibrillation. So I am the underlying cause treat court the body. I'm the patient can rehydrate court the body. I'm patient infection treat court the body. High patient hypoxia treat court the body. Atrial fibrillation will improve by itself. So I mean, the atrial fibrillation you know, she did not happen. On the other hand, I concluded that it was the atrial fibrillation, which was actually the cause behind the patient's deterioration. A ketre atrial fibrillation is uh, association of the patient's deterioration and a complication of the patient's deterioration. On the other hand, case the patient heart rate 175, that was attributed as the cause of the patient's deterioration. So we have the main purpose of atrial fibrillation to treat. I'm not worried about the atrial fibrillation unless the heart rate is really, really high, because in this condition, I need to treat the patient's dehydration, infection, and hypoxia. I move on to D, the patient's GCS is slightly low. So I start getting worried because the patient's BP being low, whether the patient is hypoperfusing the brains or not. And he's confused and not being able to answer the questions correctly. However, the GCS is not that low that I'm worried about the airway. The patient's blood sugar is slightly high, but he's got a history of diabetes. He's at risk of having DK. So I just need to ensure that he has not gotten into DK, but there is no ketones in the urine dip. I look at the pupils which are reactive to light. I go to E to see whether there's any other source of sepsis apart from the lungs, I don't find one. But the, because the patient's GCS is low, uh, sorry, because the patient's BP is low, I need to just ensure the kidneys are being well perfused. And I do need to accurately estimate the urine output. So I catheterize the patient. It's draining at 35 mils per hour, not very high, but it's still like okay-ish. But on top of that, I find a very dark color, which further confirms my belief and my uh, thinking that the patient is probably dehydrated. So at this moment, even though the patient has heart failure, I <clears throat> I still should give fluids to correct the patient's dehydration. I revisit the patient back. I revisit the patient back. 15 liters of oxygen. But the patient has got COPD. So, I don't have to say that. I don't have to say that. I don't have carbon dioxide retention features. The patient has a quick history. I don't have to carbon dioxide uh, retention history at Chenakina. Patient is COPD Kotutin. Judy, if the patient has a history of COPD, which is long standing, or if it has a history of carbon dioxide retention in the past, or if the current ABG is showing features of carbon dioxide retention, the Halamakinto, 15 liter per 
যে অক্সিজেন যেটা শুরু করেছিলাম সেটা থেকে আমার যেটা দেখতে হবে আমার আই নিড টু নাও সেট আ টার্গেট অফ 88 টু 92 এন্ড আই নিড টু ডু হোয়াটএভার ইজ नीडेड টু মেইনটেইন দ্যাট স্যাচুরেশন যতটুকু অক্সিজেন লাগে ততটুকুই আমার দিতে হবে আচ্ছা সো এগুলো করে আমি আই ডু দ্য ইনিশিয়াল এবিসিডি অ্যাসেসমেন্ট অফ দ্য پیشنট মুভিং অন টু কেস নাম্বার 11 দিস ইজ আ 28 ইয়ার ওল্ড very fit and healthy young man who comes to the hospital with just a 3 day history of pleuritic chest pain fever and a productive cough and shortness of breath i do the airway assessment which i don't have any concerns be they massively concerned because the oxygen saturation is remarkably low at 73% the patient is extremely tachypneic and this coarse repetition on the right mid zone with slightly decreased breath sounds on the right lower zone whether that indicates the patient has got right sided pneumonia with pleural effusion on the right side i don't know. like i'm worried so at eventually at the chest x-ray amake bole dibe eta but at this moment i do not need to worry about chest x-ray in the initial abcd assessment what i need to do is immediately correct the patient's oxygen saturation i need to start 15 liters of oxygen and because of it, there is evidence of pneumonia i might need the i might need to request for antibiotics but before that i go on to see see take the exam patient's bp is slightly on the low side and heart rate slightly on the high side so i take blood from the patient i take abg and the routine bloods and i start the patient on some fluids <laughs> এটা করতে করতে আমি একটা কুইক অ্যাসেসমেন্ট দেখলাম যে পেশেন্ট ফ্লুইড ওভারলোডেড নাকি না হি ডাজেন্ট অ্যাপিয়ার ফ্লুইড ওভারলোডেড অন দা কন্ট্রারি হি অ্যাপিয়ারস ডিহাইড্রেটেড সো अगेन व्हाই আই শুড গিভ দা পেশেন্ট ফ্লুইড বিকজ দা পেশেন্ট মে ওয়েল বি গোইং ইনটু সেপসিস ডি তে গিয়ে দা পেশেন্ট জিসিএস ইজ ফাইন देयर ইজ নো ফিচারস অফ মেনিনজাইটিস দা সিবিজি ইজ ফাইন অ্যাজ ওয়েল ই তে গিয়ে অ্যাবডোমেন ডাজেন্ট সোর অ্যাপিয়ার লাইক আ সোর্স অফ সেপসিস দা লিমস আর সফট নন টেন্ডার সো আই এম নট থিংকিং অ্যাট দিস মোমেন্ট উইথ দা লাংস বিইং having coarse crepitations p is possibly not a diagnosis the patient is not ecteric not anemic but the temperature is raised general skin survey the i mean quickly correct them to ensure the patient doesn't have any anaphylaxis or cellulitis so i've done the abcd assessment i go back to a uh, b karan ami ki korechilam patient profoundly hypoxic chilo so patient came 15 liters oxygen diyechi whether that is bringing up the oxygen sats or not i i also by the by the time i go back i should have access to the patient's abg reports that should show whether the partial pressure of oxygen is really high or not that should show the lactate levels or not so what if 15 liter of oxygen dawar poro dekha gelo je patient er oxygen saturation ekono 94% utheni so my target is to get the oxygen sats above 94% so a worrying lead still 84% abg result amar kache esha poreche ebong dekha jacche 15 liter oxygen dawar poro patient er PO2 was only 8.3, where, whereas it should be a lot higher than that. So somebody who's got 15 liter oxygen, that amounts to 85% oxygen, they should have a oxygen sats of 75 millimeter mercury if they had a clear lungs. So the rule is very simple. If the car lungs clear, just 10 millimeter mercury calm their oxygen PO2. So if I'm giving them 85% oxygen, their PO2 should be around 75 millimeter mercury. মার্কারি কিন্তু দেখা যাচ্ছে তার তার অক্সিজেন সেটস 8.3 সো যদি অক্সিজেন 30 থেকে 40 এর উপরে থাকতো আই উডন্ট আই উডন্ট হ্যাভ ওয়ারিড বাট ইটস রিমার্কেবলি লো এট 8 মিলিমিটার মার্কারি when it should be at least above 30 or 40 মিলিমিটার মার্কারি অন টপ অফ দ্যাট দ্য ল্যাকটেট লেভেল ইজ রিয়েলি হাই সো ইট मींस দ্য দ্য পেরিফেরাল টিস্যুস আর নট গেটিং এনাফ অক্সিজেন সো আমি 15 লিটারে যদি এটা না দিতে পারি হোয়াট ডাজ দ্যাট मीन দ্যাট मींस দ্য লাংস ইজ ভেরি ব্যাড এনাফ দ্য پیشنট কুড পসিবলি बेनिफिट from intubation so immediately get itu involved okay so a patient ke amar immediately itu involve kora lagbe because this patient will need possibly need mechanical ventilation okay a scenario jodi a 28 year old fit and healthy patient er jonno apply na kore je 79 year old the elderly patient jonno apply kora hoto je whose mobility is really low and who's got multiple comorbidities tahole ami ki kortam tar jonno clearly kintu i ventilation is not a suitable option Karan, he would not he would not be able to take the stress of a ventilation and we can't win him off if even if we vent intubate him to tar jonno ami ki korbo shei khetre jodi ventilation na thake kintu amar to i can't be just satisfied with an oxygen saturation of 84% and i can't be sat- satisfied with a po2 of only 8 mm mercury on 15 liters i need to go above and beyond this is where i sh- i should start considering things like high flow cpap or bipap i still need to speak to itu because they would be the ones who would be in a better place to tell me about this the same scenario applies if for some reason this patient was still young but itu facility time thake na dite partam for example jodi itu bed na thake the itu bed by ventilation support you now dite pari the patient may still benefit from cpap bipap or high flow so it's acha ei patient e jodi dekha jay to je 15 liters of oxygen e tar oxygen sats have now gone up to 894% but he is still tachypneic at 35 uh, breaths per minute 
তাহলে আমি কি করব সেই ক্ষেত্রে দেখেন সে যদি পারসিস্টেন্টলি অ্যাকিপনিক থাকে 35 ব্রেথ পার মিনিট হি মাইট টায়ার আউট হি মাইট বিকাম এক্সহাউস্টেড এন্ড দ্যাট উইল বি disastrous because then he will lose his ventilatory urge so ei khetre ami tar respiratory muscles theke kichuta effort komiye nawar jonno ami kintu even though oxygen saturations are well maintained is he to respiratory is working so hard i might think of giving him some cpap or bipap that is a positive pressure ventilation so that some of the effort from the respiratory muscles can be taken off eta thakla amar arekta shubidha hocche even though i'm getting 94% oxygen into the patient's body a lot of this oxygen is being used by the very hardly working respiratory muscles if i can reduce their effort through something like a cpap or bipap tahale amar oxygen overall tissue oxygenation better hobe what if the same uh, principle applied for the same patient the 28 year old patient if the oxygen sats remained at only 91% at 15 liters should i be happy 91% at 15 liters is alarming get an abg done abg will tell you about the po2 if the po2 is really low so if you you're giving that person 85% oxygen if the po2 is like any anywhere below 20 the patient might still need intubation so if the oxygen sats remained at 91% on 15 liters do an abg again and see whether the patient still needs intubation or not okay so this is a 60 year old woman who has got a history of copd has now come in with 3 days history of shortness of breath and productive cough you do the airway you you know you don't have any concerns be they you're concerned because the oxygen sats are very low so even though the patient has copd history you start them on 15 liters of oxygen the respiratory is high the lungs are diffusely full of bronchi so you immediately request for nebulization there is only scattered creps not much so and there is no evidence of any heart failure hmm. but the lungs show vesicular with prolonged expiration like i said there is no evidence of any pulmonary edema uh and the jvp is not raised as well so you move on to d the patient looks lethargic but there is no loss in tcs uh when you go to e you find that the patient has got some flapping tremor so probably this patient has got carbon dioxide retention you're giving the patient 15 liters of oxygen so the next question would be we know the diagnosis this patient has got a history of copd and now has diffusely uh like lungs full of diffuse bronchi so this is probably an infect uh, like uh, because there's some crepitations as well this is probably infective exacerbation of, of copd so you have and the patient on top of that has probable type 2 respiratory failure but has type 1 respiratory failure as well because oxygen sats were low so oxygen uh, saturation or low carbon dioxide retention or cortisol so. so how do we what do we do now we need to wait for abg to confirm that the patient has retained uh, carbon dioxide if the patient carbon dioxide retain or kore tahale what we need to decide is whether this is acute or chronic chronic jodi chronic hoy tahole whether this is compensated or not if the patient's carbon dioxide has been compensated by bicarbonate retention uh, bicarbonate retention tahole jeta hobe tahole ph kintu normal thakbe because it has been compensated on the other hand jodi patient er pco2 joto tuku uh, compensated hoyse by bicarbonate mechanism tar theke beshi pco2 patient retain kore thake tahole kintu that's uncompensated an uncompensated retention of carbon dioxide is harmful and we need to get rid of that carbon dioxide we do not need to get rid of the carbon dioxide which has been compensated already eta bujhar ekta upay seta hocche ph er dike takano jodi carbon dioxide jeta she retain koreche seta jodi bicarbonate er fully compensated hoye thake tahole the ph will be normal jodi je carbon dioxide ta retain kore thake seta jodi ph ta sorry je je carbon dioxide ta retain koreche seta jodi bicarbonate er fully compensated na hoye thake ebong the patient has retained more carbon dioxide then The, the ph will be low because the patient will have respiratory acidosis so an abg with a high ph and a normal sorry an abg with a high pco2 and a normal ph is not worrying on the other hand an abg with a high pco2 with a low ph is worrying to ei khetre amar ki korte hobe ami patient ke shuru korechhilam 15 liters per minute ekhon amar jeta korte hobe i need to turn uh, uh, <coughs> like switch off the 15 liters and i switch off korbo na ami convert korbo into a venturi mask ebong ei venturi mask diye toto ta oxygen dibo joto ta amake patient ke dite hobe to maintain an oxygen sat of 88 to 92 on top of that amar patient ta ke medically management korte hobe for the bronchospasm that should include nebulization steroids and some antibiotics as well acha ekhon abg te dekha gelo patient ta ashole pco2 retain korche that is the ph is low and the ph pco2 is raised shei khetre amar kokhon niv dite hobe bipap dite hobe prothomei na এক ঘন্টা মেডিকেল ম্যানেজমেন্ট আমি করব আমি কন্ট্রোল অক্সিজেন থেরাপি দিব টু এনশিওর দ্য পেশেন্ট অক্সিজেন স্যাচার বিটুইন 88 টু 92 এবং এক ঘন্টা পর আমি রিপিট এবিজি করব যদি মেডিকেল ম্যানেজমেন্ট এবং মেডিকেল ম্যানেজমেন্ট এবং কন্ট্রোল অক্সিজেন থেরাপি দেওয়ার পরও তারপরে দেখা যায় পেশেন্ট ইজ হ্যাজ গট পারসিস্টেন্টলি রেজ পিএসইউ টু উইথ লো পিএইচ এন্ড দ্য পিএইচ হ্যাজ নট নরমালাইজড 
তাহলে আমার পেশেন্টকে যেটা করতে হবে এনআইভি দিতে হবে পেট যদি নরমালাইজ করে থাকে রিগার্ডলেস অফ ওয়েদার দ্য পিসিও টু ইজ রেজড অর নট আমার এনআইভি দিতে হবে না আমার শুধু এনআইভি কথা চিন্তা করতে হবে যদি পিএইচ হ্যাজ রিমেইনড লো বাট দেন এগেইন আমার এই ব্যাপারে যখন এনআইভি ব্যাপারে ডিসিশন নিতে হবে আই নিড টু স্পিক টু মাই সিনিয়র কলিগস আই নিড টু স্পিক টু রেসপিরেটরি ফিজিশিয়ানস আই মাই নিড টু স্পিক টু আইটি ইউ অ্যাজ ওয়েল Case number 13 involves somebody who's got a heart failure, ischemic heart disease, CKD and diabetes, and now has presented with a three-day history of fever and rash on the right leg. If on a similar duration, the patient has not been eating and drinking well and is vomiting as well. So already I mean, the heart failure patient, the patient has got some features which, may, needs, which means he might end up needing fluids. So ABCD assessment overall, the patient is hemodynamically unstable as manifested by a low blood pressure, high heart rate, and a prolonged capillary refilling time and pulse is also slightly weak so i'm see the blood in any because i need to look at the lactate levels and crp levels to see whether the patient has got here sepsis or not and i take the usual fluids as well uh bloods as well and i start the patient on fluids even though he has a history of heart failure because my circulatory fluid status assessment has not shown the patient to be in fluid overloaded but on the other hand has shown that the patient may actually be lacking fluids in the body so i start the patient on fluids i move on to d the patient is lethargic but i can explain i can expect that because the bp is low so possibly he's not perfusing his brains properly and i need to go to e among e the gear the patient has got features of cellulitis on the right calf with a raised temperature so i've done the abcd assessment i've diagnosed the patient has got cellulitis i've got diagnosed the patient has sepsis i need to treat the patient with fluids control like fluids with constant constant uh assessment of the patient's fluid status to ensure the patient is not being made fluid overloaded i need to pay, give the patient antibiotics even though with the heart failure as long as the patient is dehydrated i still need to keep on giving the patient fluids je kono shomoy jodi fluid overload hoye jay ebong bp jodi proper low thake othoba jodi 1 ghontar moddhe 2 3 liter fluid dar poro bp low thake the patient might need vasopressin okay i'm going to quickly uh skip uh, case number 14 because we're just struggling a bit with time and case number uh, case number 15 ajay this is a patient who has got a decompensated liver cirrhosis who has been brought to the hospital after being found unconscious in the toilet where he has been living for the last 10 days amra er theke beshi kichu jani na so when the patient comes to uh, us we are not worried about the airway because the patient even though the gcs is slightly low but uh, the patient can like it's not massively low so he can maintain his own airway the respirator is around 30 so it's his tachypnic the oxygen sats are not recording correctly and the lungs are clear so jar jodi je tachypnic tar oxygen saturation ekhon thik moto record kora jacche na there are two there are two possibilities ekta hocche oxygen saturation eto tai kom je thik moto record korte chena othoba the patient is peripherally so under perfused the oxygen sats thik moto record korte chena in any case we need an abg to know sita chole gelam sita blood pressure is found low the patient is peripheral is extremely cold the capillary refill time is significantly prolonged at 6 seconds and the bp is low and the heart rate is high so so i what i know is the patient is hemodynamically extremely unstable i go back to thinking about oxygen saturation i've started the patient on 15 liters yeah but patient the it may ekhono kintu dui ta possibility ache either the patient has something like a massive p jekhane significant hypoxia and cardiovascular instability hoyeche or the patient's oxygen saturation may be completely normal and this may be just primarily be a cardiovascular problem see then this may well be caused by a cardiogenic shock from an mi so i do a bedside ecg the bedside ecg has not shown features of any mi i go on to d jekhane deklam je patient gcs is low uh, but i just ensure that the patient doesn't have any focal neurology no for features of meningitis and the blood sugar is normal i go to e the patient has got features of ascites which i can expect because the patient has got a history of decompensated liver liver cirrhosis limbs are soft non tender the patient is anemic the patient is jaundiced so my next question is is the gcs low because of uh, hypoperfusion of the brain or is it because the patient has got something like a hepatic encephalopathy however uh, at this moment i do not know the drug history me immediately janina so i'm a bit perplexed what is going on but by the time i'm done with my abcde assessment i have access to the patient's abg results and the abg results show that the po2 is completely fine so po2 is not a problem so why is the patient hemodynamically unstable and what has happened i look at the a hemoglobin level which uh, sometimes good abg machines can give me and i immediately see that the hemoglobin level has taken a massive hit so hemoglobin level a patient is massively fall koreche so what is going on has the patient bled where is the patient bleeding from a cld patient shobche beshi bleed kore 
সবচেয়ে কমনলি ব্লিড করে আপার জিআই ব্লিডিং সো মাই ই অ্যাসেসমেন্ট ওয়াজ নট কমপ্লিট বিফোর আই ডিড আ পিআর সো again which shows why a comprehensive abcd assessment including wherever i need to do a pv or a pr examination can give me a proper diagnosis what this patient needs is urgent fluids to raise up the blood pressure or and i still need to give the patient 15 liters of oxygen because the patient is critically unwell i need to immediately request for bloods i need to stabilize the patient with blood products and fluids and i need to get an endoscopy after immediately after trying to stabilize the patient within the first 6 to 12 hours okay case number 6 again uh, to conclude this is a patient who has got a history of uh, ischemic heart disease and diabetes and hypertension and ckd4 who is brought to the hospital after his uh, family members found him unconscious at home it theke beshi amra kichu history jani na amra jani na patient unconscious howar age ki kono headache er history chilo patient ki hypoglycemia hoye geche we don't know so a patient unconscious or kintu onegula karan ache the patient may ha- be may have a hypoglycemic coma the patient may have dka the patient may have a uremic encephalopathy the patient may have uh, an like an mi with a hyperperfusion of the brain the patient's bp may be very so low that uh, he is not perfusing his brains properly or the patient may have a stroke so how does abcd assessment dictate whether we need to look like আমাদের প্রায়োরিটি কি থাকবে টু লুক ফর মেডিকেল কজ লাইক টু লুক ফর মেটাবলিক কজেস বিহাইন্ড হিজ লো কনসিয়াসনেস অর টু লুক ফর স্ট্রাকচারাল ইন্ট্রাক্রেনিয়াল কজেস হুইচ ইজ লিডিং টু দ্য লো কনসিয়াসনেস ইফ ইটস সামথিং লাইক আ স্ট্রোক অর ইন্ট্রাক্রেনিয়াল হেমোরেজ উই নিড টু ডু আ সিটি হেড অ্যাজ কুইকলি অ্যাজ পসিবল ইফ ইটস নট ডিউ টু এন ইন্ট্রাক্রেনিয়াল হেমোরেজ অর আ স্ট্রোক উই ডু নট নিড টু রাশ টু আ সিটি হেড উই মেট স্টিল নিড আ সিটি হেড বাট উই ডু নট পসিবলি নিড টু রাশ টু ইট হাউ ডিজ এ বি সি ডি ই দিতে আমরা যখন ডি করব তখন কিন্তু আমরা ক্লিয়ারলি দেখব যে কোনো ল্যাটারালাইজিং সাইন আছে না কিনা পেশেন্টের যদি এত বড় একটা স্ট্রোক হয়ে থাকে যে তার কারণে তার কনসিয়াসনেস লেভেল ফল করেছে আই মাই গেট ল্যাটারালাইজিং সাইন তাহলে আমি কি দেখবো পেশেন্ট হয়তো একদিক নাড়ছে না পেশেন্টের পিউপলস হয়তো অ্যাসিমেট্রি আছে পেশেন্টের চোখে আইবলগুলোতে হয়তো কোনো অ্যাসিমেট্রি আছে ইন দ্য কনজু লাইক ইন দ্য ডিরেকশন অফ মুভমেন্ট the planter ex- uh, examination can tell us whether the patient has got some extensive response or not so e jinish gula kintu amake bole dibe the patient ki kono neurological feature ache naki ami jodi kono neurological feature na thake tahole i need to look for other causes for the low gcs whether the bp is low jeta ami c te dekhbo whether the patient has got any uh, low blood sugar jeta ami d te dekhbo hmm? patient er kono kono dangerous electrolyte imbalance sodium levels onek kom naki na seta ami kothay dekhbo ami c te dekhbo karon ami already blood niye niyechi hmm? so that will the abcd e assessment will dictate me je ami ki brain er dikhe jacchi assessment e naki ami kono metabolic cause er dikhe jacchi আর যদি সিটি হেড লাগেও ধরেন আমি কোনো নিউরোলজিক্যাল ফিচার পেলাম তাহলে হোয়াট আর দ্য মিনিমাম থিংস আই নিড স্টিল নিড টু এনশিওর বিফোর রাশিং টু আ সিটি হেড আই নিড টু স্টিল এনশিওর দ্যাট আই হ্যাভ টেকিং কেয়ার অফ দ্য পেশেন্টস এয়ারওয়ে যেহেতু পেশেন্টের জিসিএস লো সো দ্যাট পেশেন্ট ডাজেন্ট হ্যাভ এনি টাং ফল ব্যাক অ্যান্ড ডাজেন্ট অ্যাসপিরেট আই হ্যাভ যদি পেশেন্ট হাইপক্সিক থাকে আমি এটাকে কারেক্ট করেছি আমি যদি পেশেন্টের বিপি ডেঞ্জারাসলি লো থাকে আমি এগুলোকে কারেক্ট করছি এবং তারপর এগুলোকে স্টেবিলাইজ করার পর আই নিড টু সেন্ড দ্য পেশেন্ট টু দ্য সিটি হেড সো দিস উড বি দিস উড বি the uh, the the things to remember so the question is just if any patient who walks into the hospital need abcd assessment the answer is yes before you take a history before you do anything you should have a comprehensive abcd assessment because to ensure that the patient has is safe it's an onic trauma jeta kora hoy ekta chart use kora hoy am jekhane kaaj kori you get the shekhane hocche eta ke chart bole news to chart that uses some markers like a respiratory rate oxygen sats whether the patient is needing oxygen or not what is the blood pressure what is the heart rate what is the patient's consciousness level and what is the patient's temperature ek ko ekta score diye dile ekta score toiri kora hoy jeta ke news to score she news to score amra even before seeing the patient we know the patient's score because this is done by the nurses then eta kore amra already even before we start to take a history we know how the patient's abcde status is on the other hand যদি কোনো পেশেন্টের নিউ স্কোর অনেক হাই থাকে নার্সরা আমাদের ইমিডিয়েটলি অ্যালার্ট করে যে এই পেশেন্টকে ইউনিট টু সি ফার্স্ট বিকজ দ্য পেশেন্ট ইজ স্কোরিং রিলি হাই এবং আমরা অলরেডি ওয়ারিড হয়ে যাই যে এই পেশেন্টের এবিসিডি অ্যাসেসমেন্টে এই পেশেন্টের অবস্থা হয়তো একটু খারাপের দিকে অন দা হ্যান্ড সামবডি স্কোরিং জিরো অন দ্য এবিসিডি অ্যাসেসমেন্ট উই আর লেস রিলিফ উই আর লেস ওয়ারিড তো অনেক তো এভরি পেশেন্ট হু কমস টু দ্য হসপিটাল ইন দ্য ফ্রন্ট ডোর শুড হ্যাভ এন এবিসিডি অ্যাসেসমেন্ট এন্ড ম্যানেজমেন্ট দাম আমরা 
it's sometimes it's very important it's so important that i just felt that we need to talk in details about this